All right, everybody, don't think of zebras. All right, here's what just happened. You're thinking of zebras. What's my point? If you want to stop a behavior, if you want to change your behaviors, don't think to yourself, don't do that. It doesn't work. You have to replace it with something else. In fact, the most effective strategies are to find behaviors that are healthy that give you a little bit of what the bad behaviors were giving you. In other words, if you need to feel more relaxed, if you need to feel some comfort, find a healthier way to do that with other behaviors. You can't simply stop behaviors. You have to replace them. I love this tip. This, yeah. this reminds me a lot of when I would golf and it was like, you get this like water hazard right in front of you. And all you think is I have to hit it over the water hazard yeah. or don't hit it in the don't water. Don't hit it in the water. Don't yeah. hit it in the water. Yeah. So you hit it in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just that it's that weird psychology where it's just like, you're so focused on that negative aspect and you're not uh, thinking about everything else to, to get you somewhere. It, well, it also reminds me, I think of maybe the single greatest hack that I figured out as a coach and trainer when it came to diet with clients, instead of looking at these bad habits or behaviors around, you know, eating fast food or drinking alcohol, or I didn't focus on that with the clients. Instead, I focused on what I wanted them to go get. The psychology around that was just mind blowing mm -hmm. on how successful it was. It was crazy. If I told somebody that they can't eat these things, sure, some people that had a lot of good discipline could stick to it, but it was inevitable that they would eventually break. This was six months a year later. And I used to justify that early on as like, oh, this is just, you know, job security. These clients <laughs> yeah. need me. They're going to need me forever. I really did. It was a bad way to look at it. Instead of thinking like, how do I really solve this? You know, I just, oh, some people aren't disciplined enough. No, the Truth is that when you tell someone they can't have it, they fixate on it. It is. Yeah. And then it becomes this rebellious thing. This, this to me, became, um, <laughs> by the way, this applies to everything. And this is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm applying this to myself in certain aspects of my life right now. But this, for fitness, became very clear when I trained a, a young lady who had struggled with eating disorder. And so her mom hired me. And she told me specifically, my daughter, uh, anorexic, she's recovering. I'd like you to train her. And I had talked to the girl's therapist before training her because I, I thought I had my own body image issues that I dealt with. And I thought, how am I going to not trigger this girl with working out in the gym? If she has body image issues, she was anorexic. How do I talk to her about diet? How do I talk to her about exercise? When all I do is talk about getting leaner, looking better, you know, at that time, right. Uh, you know, avoiding these types of foods. And the therapist said, no, 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 just, just have her focus on getting stronger. And it was like a light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk to her about her body or weight loss or don't restrict yourself with diet or no, don't not eat like you did in the past. All I did was I said, hey, what we're going to focus on is getting you as strong as possible. That's all we're going to do. And so she took her focus off of appearance and I got to look a particular whatever to I'm just going to get stronger. And that was amazing. So relieving. It, not only was it relieving, but what do you have to do to get stronger? All the stuff that I would have wanted her to do anyway, right? She has to eat more protein. She's got, we're going to pay attention to her performance, takes her, her eyes off of her body. And the success was just exceptional. Um, and that's just really what it you is. You know, you're also highlighting um, how I can always tell like somebody's like a really good coach and a trainer. Um, and also it explains why I think sometimes uh, people that listen to the show get frustrated probably when they they recommend like some trainer right some young trainer who like touts all the great studies and they're like and he's super fit and he's motivational and they're like why don't you guys bring him on he's so great he's this that it's like i can tell by what he or she is communicating like what stage or level they are as a yeah. coach and a trainer they haven't realized it yet. yeah and it's like and it's not to, to to knock on them and say like they're bad it just means that they haven't reached a level yet of really understanding how to help these people. Mm -hmm. Sure, they can regurgitate a study uh, about nutrition or exercise, which there's a lot of value in understanding those studies. I think that that's part of the process. But if that's all they're hammering and they're drilling down to people is the the science and the studies, and they're not talking about behavioral science and the psychology around everything that we do, they're missing the biggest piece, in my opinion. So I'm not excited about bringing them on to share their knowledge and information because it's not there yet. It's not at a place where it's really going to truly shift the way people look at exercise and nutrition. And really, that's where the conversation has to go because anybody can Google search now. A, a study or understand how to exercise or eat properly, but learning how to change behaviors, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the monster. Yeah. So for someone listening, how, how would you apply this? Well, if you, you know, if you reach for food 
and you've identified that the reason why you reach for certain things is because you're anxious. Let's just say, let's just say you're uncomfortable and food brings you comfort. Okay. So in uncomfortable situations or when you're under a lot of stress, you've identified in yourself, and this is different from person to person. For some people it's boredom, for other people it's, you know, whatever, but let's just say this is you, right? That when you're uncomfortable, you're stressed out, you reach for hyper palatable, enjoyable foods because in the moment while you're eating them, they do satisfy something. They do solve the problem for you temporarily. And yes, the solution is terrible in the sense that it causes the problem to get worse over time because obviously your health goes down more. You become more, let's say, obese, which causes more stress, more anxiety, which causes you to eat more and all that. But in the temporary, it does solve that problem. I don't feel good. I'm anxious. While I'm eating this food, I feel really good. So you may say to yourself, I need to stop eating that food. That's like trying not to think of zebras. You're going to fail. Instead, say to yourself, what feeling am I looking for? I want relief from this anxiety or this stress or this discomfort. Let me think of a better alternative, something that's healthier that will give me some of that. And it's going to, it's not going to replace it completely. You've already developed a relationship with food where it really does a really good job for you, but think of something else that can kind of do that a little bit for you. So you might think, say to yourself, well, okay, I really like talking to my friend. So when I have that feeling where I need to just medicate myself with food, I'm going to call my friend. Or maybe it's a walk, or maybe it's stretching, or maybe it's listening to an audiobook, or what. It really doesn't matter if it's a better behavior. You could replace the old one with that better behavior. And then over time, step ladder yourself to better and better behaviors to the point where maybe you don't even need to find something for yourself. But if you just simply get rid of that behavior, um, you haven't solved the problem. The problem is not the food that's causing problems for sure. The problem is you don't know how to deal with whatever it is, discomfort, anxiety, stress, or whatever. And until you figure that out, it's going to be a struggle. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below this video. The first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, we got a sale. It's January. This is the biggest sale of the year for us. So check this out. We put together four bundles. We discounted each of them by $300 to $350 off. Here's what they are. We have the new to weightlifting bundle. We have the body transformation bundle. We have the new year extreme intensity bundle. And then we have another body transformation bundle. This one's 2.0. You can get all of them if you click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So I'm curious, you were... You shared some of this off air with me, some of the stuff that you're you're trying to do. I'm I'm more curious. I'm less curious about the vices. I think everybody has vices or things that right. they tend to uh, gravitate towards in those moments. I'm actually more curious on have you hacked into the things that you're replacing that those feelings when yeah. it comes along and you and you want to do something. What are you? What have you found is the replacement for that? Okay. So I, I want to preface this. I really, um, getting super personal sometimes for me is hard. Uh, but so this is going to be very personal and it's hard because it feels, uh, obviously it's out in the public and it feels like, oh, I'm signaling to everybody what I'm doing or whatever. At least that's how it feels to me when other people do it. I get annoyed with it. So, so I'm doing the same thing, but there's a reason for it. So, I'm asking you, so. But it's I'm, cooler. You're, well, here's what, yeah. here's the deal. I, I, there's a reason why I did this. Okay. So I'll, let me back up. So. I've been trying to reduce uh, my use of things that are uh, that help distract me from negative feelings. Um, so one of them is cannabis, uh, so I can use marijuana. Another one is kratom. This is an over-the-counter herb that has got some opiate-like qualities. Social media can be like this for me as well. But those two, those are the two big ones. And and you guys know this. I've been trying to reduce my usage yeah. now for I don't know six months or longer, <clears throat> and uh, I kept failing. Mm. I kept failing. I kept failing and I kept failing. Now my usage wasn't like through the roof. It wasn't like I'm getting stoned all day long. It was at night I'd before bed, my Kratom use. I think I got up to at the high end, I was taking maybe seven or eight capsules a day, which, uh, it's is not a lot. No, I know people, right. that, I, I mean, not people. I know that people can get as high as 30, 40, 50. Yeah. Um, I was functional I was going to work and you know, whatever. But when I tried to stop, I couldn't, mm. this happened to me a bunch of times where I like go like a day or two and then I come back day or two and I come back. And did you connect that, that feeling of not being able to stop was more of the physiological effects from no. those things or was it more of a mental thing? No, there was no physiological withdrawal. Oh, interesting. It wasn't long enough. Interesting. It's like, you, you know, you know how long you have, you have to go off cannabis for 
a week or two before you start to notice withdrawal. Yeah. With Kratom, I think I guess depending on how much you're used, but I didn't I wouldn't notice anything if that went off a day. It's not a big it was all psychological. Oh, interesting. So you You've know been like irritated, moody more so, or is it like what do you notice? I want to feel good and I don't want to feel anything other than good. Mm. So, so it could be anxious, it could be usually, stress. It's it could usually be, anxiety. Okay. I, I'm a very anxious uh, and I'm very uncomfortable in my own, uh, just be honest, uncomfortable in my own skin. And I don't process shit. I keep it all you know, down here and I just do what I think what I'm supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. So I was trying to stop, trying to stop. Couldn't, it wasn't happening. And um, you know, I, my wife's super supportive and we've been going through some other stuff. And so I, I, I said to myself, you know, I know the I know myself very well. Here's what, something you guys know about me that maybe the audience doesn't know. I don't talk about anything to anybody. If I'm having a challenge or whatever, you guys, everybody in the world that's close to me doesn't know until it's so bad that it breaks. Nobody knows nothing. I don't talk about it. it's and it just goes back to childhood. I just don't talk about anything. So um, I keep everything inside, and I said, okay, I need to talk to people because that keeps me accountable. And I think if I tell people that, then I'm, then that's going to make me feel e either like I'm helping someone, which I feel, if I feel like I'm helping someone, I'll be more motivated to be consistent. And number two, I'll be too, I'll be embarrassed to not follow through. So I said, who in my life are, is the, who are the people I would least likely want to tell I have a problem with cannabis and Kratom or just substances in general, my parents. Mm. My parents, <laughs> did you the go last through, did you go through that? fucking people on earth I would want to tell wow. are my parents. Wow. You did not. Did I you did. really? Oh, wow. I did. I got on the oh, phone. That's a bold move, sir. I know. I got on the phone. <laughs> yeah. my, I mean, you know, like this is my, like my, to my parents, I want to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So I got on the phone, my parents, and I had Jessica on the other line because I wanted people there. And I told my parents <laughs> and they were very supportive. And of course, my mom's a little anxious. So she's like. Are you doing anything else? Are you, <laughs> you know it's a gateway. She, oh no, no, no! You don't understand. Are you Are you doing meth? Are you doing heroin? Are you, no, she did it. Uh, she did. No, like, oh, no mom, I'm not. It's not like that or whatever. It's like, are, is your health going bad? Are you said, under no. a bridge right now? What's yeah. Happening? No, mom, not. You know, <laughs> I'm not having sex in alleyways for drugs. <laughs> I said no. I told. Her, I said. I said. I've just. I, I tried to stop like uh, several times and I couldn't. And I had to. I knew if I told you guys, it would make it. Uh, much more real for me because that's the other part me not talking about it it's not real it's kind of like just inside of me sure. i tell people that, oh yeah. fuck this is sure. a real deal yeah, yeah. like i really have a problem <laughs> right right so i did that and then I, I came home and i was like you know i had to kind of deal with the feelings of my parents knowing that i'm doing with this you know having this challenge and then i thought i should probably i'm gonna post this on social media because it's gonna feel like i'm helping people and uh, that'll make me feel better about it. I'll feel stronger about it. If I feel like I'm helping someone else, I'll feel stronger about it. So I fucking posted it on X. I actually posted on X that I'm having a struggle with this or whatever. Oh, I, I didn't even see you did that. I hit send and I threw my phone on the side of the room and I just fucking let, let I told myself ride. if in three hours mm -hmm. I change my mind, I'll take it out. But I gave myself three hours because I knew <laughs> that'll be enough time for people to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's sitting there. And it's still there. It's, you know what's funny? The, one of the most viral tweets I've ever put out. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even see I was that. Like a hundred thousand at this point, like a hundred thousand views and like a hundred comments and all that stuff. And so anyway, so I, I did that and it's, uh, it's just, I, I'm trying to get, I also took Instagram off my phone. So I'm, I'm going to, I'll put it back on when it's my day in the life. Yeah. Otherwise I already don't use Instagram. We already have an assistant who manages my personal one. Because Instagram, of all the social media ones, are, is the most uh, toxic, distracting. Yeah, yeah, it's just the most distracting yeah. for me, hundred yeah. percent. So got rid of that one. Uh, <clears throat> I create them. I went down a pill every day. So I went six, five, four, three, two, one. Now zero. Cannabis went from nightly to every other to every third, and now I'm going to be down to once a week and then off. So I'm trying to scale it down to to prevent withdrawal, which I don't know if that's a good or bad strategy, you know, so that's what I've recommended for caffeine for people. So that's what I'm trying. So that's that. So, yeah. And wow. so, and, and now I couldn't, I, I couldn't just stop. Right. I had to replace it with something else. Yeah. That's what I was curious yeah. about. Yeah. So what did, what did, what did you change? And did you change 
each one with different things or is it across the board? If you have the desire to get on social, you have the desire to have creative, you have the desire to, we, it's like, this is my go-to move or you have. First thing I've, the, the, the first thing I, and I'm going to add things to this, but prayer. Yeah. That's the, that's the big one for me. Yeah. And, uh, for me that helps because, um, it's the most real that I am. So what, cause you know, I, I believe in God. So when I pray, I, I believe he knows everything. So I can't be fake, right? I can be fake to you guys. Like I yeah. could say to you, yeah, right. oh no, I'm fine. I'm stopping this. It's all good. If I'm praying to God, he knows everything. Yeah. And I say, I'm fine. And I'm like, actually, you know, it's not fine. You know, I'm having, fun. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's just pray, 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 pray. And uh, that's making a big difference. I'm also going to either do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu again or yoga. Um, I know those are very different. <laughs> <laughs> Both are super relaxing. Yeah. Uh, wait. So jujitsu, because of the social component, I don't have a social component outside of uh, a home and work. I don't do anything with anybody. So it'd be nice to go out. Plus uh, jujitsu uh, is a healthy, less body focused uh, outlet for me. Mm -hmm. Like lifting weights can make me a little body focused. Yeah. Jujitsu, it's performance a hundred percent. I told you I'm down to do that with you. Yeah. I would do that with so, you. So yeah. there's that. And then yoga is the other one. And yoga makes me really fucking uncomfortable. I've done it before. It makes me super uncomfortable, super quiet. I'm in there, a meathead. I suck at it. It's yin yoga. I'm holding stretches for long periods of time. I got to think about shit and sit in my own uncomfortable, <laughs> but I'm trying to find ways to like mm -hmm. be uncomfortable you know, and then, and, uh, and you know, it's crazy too. uh, being uncomfortable and trying to avoid it, man, it makes me communicate differently. It makes me see things differently. It's not good, dude. You mm. gotta be, you gotta be in it. It is mm. not good, man. Mm. It's not good. I, was, I learned about polyvagal theory recently trip off this when you're in fight or flight, which I'm probably in a lot of the time. Did you know that a friendly face will appear suspicious and that a scared face will appear uh, threatening your, your brain perceives things differently when you're in fight or flight. Interesting. Mm. Your ear will hear high pitched and low pitched sounds and will almost, will try to remove mid range sounds. Okay. So now that you know that, have so you everything's the threat when yeah. you're in fight or flight, right. that's what you're in. Everything you're, is basically everything's a fucking threat. Now, now yeah. that you under, now that you understand that and you know that, have you seen that? manifest like totally. have, oh you have yeah oh interesting yeah, yeah, do you totally. remember the first like like oh well, shit that's I, interesting i'm reading i'm probably reading this wrong oh or, i communicate to to my wife passive aggressively a lot because i'll perceive what she's saying to me as an attack and not even realize it and then i'll say something and then i'll think about it after so i've been doing i've been thinking about it I'm like that was kind of a veiled uh thing that i said like mm. I, I, yeah Oh, interesting. You know, mm -hmm. mm. so it's, it's a long process. Step one is getting rid of distractions because without that, that's black and white. By the way, that's not the root problem. I think for some people that is the big, big problem. For me, that's the no. It's the that's same. like a black and white. Get no, rid of this. It's so the same. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Reason why one of our our favorite tips to give somebody who's starting a diet is to Jay just don't eat by the phone. That's your first step. Yeah, yeah. we'll get into what to eat. And people think that sometimes it's a stupid a piece of advice. No, it's brilliant. It's yeah. like if you if you do things, if you have these bad nutritional habits that you you tend to gravitate towards, and you start to make the connection that you're always scrolling on your phone while yeah. you're doing it, or you're watching television in your living room and mm -hmm. you're and you're stuffing your face. The first step isn't like, oh, you need to get six ounces of chicken breast and have one cup of rice and have a vegetable. No, the first thing is just actually stop watching television yeah. or scrolling on your phone while you do that. Get rid of the distraction, become more aware. Step one. And become yeah. more aware, yeah. and right away you'll find you'll already probably start making better decisions. And so, and then you move into the. It's like calming your heart rate down, you know, right. make it like any kind of an intense like uh, conversation you have with somebody to just kind of like really start focusing on like calming Bro. down and like it, you, the delivery is so much better. Here's how bad it is for me. I don't even know when I'm anxious. Mm. I don't even fucking know it. I started to figure it out. Mm. I get this feeling in my hands. Cause then you distract it. I, and we're I just, I'm it. so good at turning that shit mm. off that, you know, that, uh, it, you know, I've been told it's a superpower. Yeah. At some point it's not because <laughs> I, I, I know now I get this feeling in my hands, I get this feeling in my feet, my mouth will get a little dry. And I don't even notice it. Now, you know what I do? I notice those things first. And then I go, oh, shit. I'm starting to feel a little anxious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's oh, really, <laughs> it's really wild, bro. Yeah, it's wild. It's just, you know, you, the, I, it just how you may grow up really shapes and forms oh, dude. how you operate. And, uh, like, undoing that is, like, 
it's a, it's a trip to learn as an adult, like how all of those things and all those interactions and all of those like potential little traumas in your life have affected like who you are Dude, as a person. There's a story, there's like a story, I'm going to mess it up, but there's like stories like this, the boy that was born with one eye, eye sewn shut and throughout his whole life, everybody says, why don't you just open your other eyes? Like, what are you talking about? I see everything. There's nothing wrong, whatever. Yeah. He did not know that it was sewn shut until they took the thread out. Yeah. And then you see. That's what it's like. Yeah, so yeah. you just don't know what you don't know. Such a crazy, yeah, yeah. such a crazy process. So I, I guess that would kind of count as like New Year's resolution-y. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I'm I guess. I hate to, that. I'm trying to segue into our like New Year's uh, uh, <laughs> did you, <laughs> adventures. Did, you, did anybody you guys make that? Any? I actually didn't this year. Normally, Katrina yeah. and I do You always something. do. Yeah, normally, do yeah, normally we do uh, We do something like that. We actually didn't uh, do that this year. Hmm. Um, I didn't even think about that this year. We... Uh, and her and I had a, a, a great New Year's. Um, we were it was just her and I, me and her and and Mac. So we had a really good New Year's, and we didn't actually nice. sit down and make a list of things. I mean, I guess we kind of did, um, not, like not formally, like right. We talked about this week coming up, and like, hey, yeah. I want to get back on this, and I I got stuff ready to meal prep, and so we did some things like that, but not as formal as I've done in the past. Yeah, yeah this was I like, don't like New Year's resolutions uh, because of our experience with them in gyms. Yeah, just yeah. I think that's why I'm. Like, yeah, we're a little tainted real. by that. I would say totally. It's yeah. an arbitrary number. Oh, it's January first. What's the difference between? But you know, it's. I think if if you, I can become so cynical yeah. that I just forget the actual value in creating new. <laughs> I was, you know? yeah, I was talking to Courtney though. Like, honestly, out of all the holidays, I get the most gracious or like, I, I look back like fondly over, I guess the whole year. Like, oh, I, really? Yeah. In terms of like gratitude. I, I get guess. that way too. You know, and yeah. it, because I'm starting a new year, I'm like, well, I just want to see like and, and reflect on all the good, positive things that, that went. Cause I mean, the, the negative is just inevitable. But like for me to like, you know, really take that, but then, build upon that grow, yeah. you know, further in that direction is where I always want to go in terms of like some kind of a goal. Uh, but really for me, it's like a fond looking back of that. But this year was really interesting because I was like having this kind of sentimental, like it's the only time I get sentimental, to be honest with you. Like, you guys <laughs> want to hit me up and be like, Oh, I love you, man. I love you, dude. Like yeah. I might say it then. Just on New Year's Eve. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, so this year was weird though. And like Courtney kind of knew that. And we were like, having some wine and and you know hanging out the kids were sick and so it actually ruined like so it our plans altered and so we had to like drive back we were up in truck we had to drive back home we got home and then we we tried to kind of make the most of it and you know watch movies and, and hang out with the kids but the kids were like just out this this was a bad one like this flu they were like so they had fever and Everett was like puking like oh, until we got the worst, there dude. but like it for some reason they slapped and, and we're watching TV and Courtney are kind of doing our thing. And then they kind of like woke back up and then it was, just, it was almost like midnight. Uh, and, and actually uh, we were watching Willow leading up and it like literally stopped right at like 1158 or something. And so I was like, Oh, okay. We're watching this. And then all of a sudden like, Three, two, one, Everett. <laughs> like, right on the dot. Literally, literally on the money. Uh, and it was like, it, we, we laugh about it now. We're like, oh my God, poor guy. And he was just like, ah, like not, not fun puke. You know, this oh, was bad. the worst. And so. What's a fun puke? What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't have fun puke? No. no. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They just get it out. Dude. I get to see you do that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I Before do that. A big I game. try to change it. You yeah. know, like, like have fun with it. Like I'm a dragon. Ah! Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, something like that. But no, it didn't work out like that. But yeah, so we, it was just, it was different. Man, everybody, and even our Christmas too, like uh, Courtney's whole family was just like knocked out. So we didn't get to do Christmas with them. But actually in turn, we had nothing but like peace, quiet, like a whole day oh, to ourselves. I was like, I could do this. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> nice. Dude. I, I dude, love her family, but I could do this. Speaking of Christmas, <laughs> my my, so we did Christmas Eve alone, also with just our kids. But my my family did their Christmas Eve, and my sister uh, thought it was a good idea to hire someone who's a Santa to come to like you know be with the kids and pass out gifts and stuff. And uh, you know, I thought to myself, I wasn't there, so I didn't have to say anything. But I was thinking to myself while I was at home, like, what kind of like older man <laughs> elects to work on Christmas Eve. You really got to question that. Right? To like, okay, it's an older guy because he's got he's got a beard and everything. He's an older guy. He elects to work on Christmas Eve to go to someone else's house. It's Christmas Eve. It's a holiday. He's going to go work and he's going to be with kids, right? 
Yeah. This, is a, this, is a, this is a creep. And then, There's no way he's bro, a that's your, not a creep, That's your bro. anxious mind defaulting to the thing that you just talked okay, about. Okay, am I before. wrong? Yes, though? yeah. Am I, mean, I wrong? It I mean, could also be, I, I'd hey, be suspect. It could also be this guy. It could be the guy who lost his family and doesn't have a family oh, anymore. Oh, come on, bro. You're making me feel and bad his, about And <laughs> he's got this his story. one connection back to giving back to Christmas is seeing the joy from kids when they see him in the house. And so I don't know. It. I think he's a pedophile. Also. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other. Right? Yeah. So anyway, so he's there, right? So afterwards, I was talking to my brother about it. You know, cause my brother's got kids. I'm like, how was it? He was like, it was good. It was good. He's like, oh, it's kind of weird though. You know, it's like a stranger in the house pretending to be Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. And I'm like, yeah, who does that on Christmas Eve? Like, who works? Because that's what I was thinking, too. He goes, later, he took off his gloves. He goes, Sal, he goes, he had, like, different color fingernails and stuff, all weird. Yeah. I'm like, how old is he? He's like, he looks like he's in his 60s. I'm like, bro, that's a weird kid. <laughs> I don't know if there's a 60-year-old that paint their fingernails different colors. Well, that's a new thing, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, what I'm saying? Okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right in this one. Yeah. So, anyway. But so, Interesting. Uh, uh, my three-year-old got his gift that he wanted. Remember, remember how when we came over? Oh, the he truck. Had, oh, oh, yeah, the, the dump truck. We went to Adam and Katrina's house. He still, still, he still talks about the great time that he had at your house because <laughs> Max has a whole bunch of toys. And, and just Max let him play is, with them. lets him play with all the toys. Like the greatest yeah. kid ever. That's the yeah, best right? kid ever, right? Because yeah. my son's three. He doesn't know how to share. So the kid lets him play with all his toys. He's like, this is the best place. Yeah. Ma and Max had a garbage truck. Yeah. That's all he wanted. So that's what he got for Christmas. And that's his favorite thing ever. Oh, bro. Uh, oh, bro. We set up the garbages. It's like, so funny how like that's such a common thing with boys love garbage trucks. Why? Mine did too. Why? They love it, dude. It's the machines, right? Yeah, it has to and be. They love, it has to be yeah, like the just, arm. Yeah, picking thing. Yeah, it has to be like the closest thing, so like I a transformer or something. So, do you think this would be fun to take our boys to the dump? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I've done it multiple times. To see the times. tractors and shit, bro. Well, I, me anytime. I yeah. told you that uh, my buddy Chris McGeeby, his, his son is like ridiculously fascinated by it. To where every morning that the so every I think it's Friday where he lives, they come and he's got to go down there. And his his the guy's giving him a, a hard hat and he's got the little vest. Oh god! So he gets in the vest. He gets his mind. Oh, bro! And oh, they yeah. just he will they, lose his mind. Yeah, yeah, and he's got to watch the whole thing. So yeah, so you should get like a like a, give him the get up too. I'll ask Chris where he got it. I think the guy gave it to him i think he got it from the garbage because the garbage man would see, see him every friday now, i would say the adult version of that is those smash rooms you know the ones where you break, oh, yeah. you break yeah. like glass <laughs> i'm not talking about jersey shore but you know, <laughs> oh, not that room. kind of smash, not room. That <laughs> smash room i like you smash know. rooms yeah those are great but um anyways yeah no it's the one where you're just like you, you could just go to town and get all the stress out and like i, I love that they have that as an option all of us helped our our dads at one point right blue collar work tell mm -hmm. me that wasn't your favorite day demolition yeah. day yeah. Demolition. Yeah. yeah yeah it's so fun yeah. and it's like the easiest part you that's know? why Nobody whoever wants to do created those smash houses were brilliant like because i didn't that wasn't around until like what maybe 15 years ago mm -hmm. I, I remember when they first started mm -hmm. popping up and it's mm -hmm. become like a thing it was brilliant like go get somebody's you know, beat up old car that nobody wants or donates and then just let people trash yeah, it. How like, therapeutic is it? Well, the I only mean? time I haven't done one, I've always oh, wanted to do you one. Have to. I've oh, done the, my, my dad was in construction. Yeah. So I got the opportunity yeah. to, you know, break down walls. Sometimes that's stuff. not fun though. Like, I, like when we had to do big ass, huge floors of just like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. granite. It's yeah. good for the first like five minutes. Yeah. yeah and then you're just like, Oh my yeah, God, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. not breaking very well. But I used to love it when we would break bathrooms down. There was like a shower with glass, and they, I'd oh, stand back and glass just throw tile through. is just so satisfying. Yeah, you know, when, you when break you a just sink, like, you know, and the it's, noise. And, oh, it's great. I know, I know, it's a yeah. good time. What is that? You know, what is know. what is that? I want to. Um, you know what I want to bring up? I want to bring up. You brought up. A, it was a documentary on on Netflix. Yes, it's the. It's called uh, uh, the Twins one. It's about the twins and what they take one group of them and they eat a meat based diet and the other one. Oh, God, I saw the preview. To I, this. Yes, I know you're talking we, about. We got to get the name of it because we have to tell people yeah I had, this I, is like the next version listen, of the uh vegan propaganda it, oh same creators same guys it's the same people that made oh it's the same people yes, yes. Oh what was God. that documentary that they the made the one that we that had was full to, of shit <laughs> you about. are what you eat is the name of this one the okay. twin it's called you are what you eat a yeah. twin experiment it's right. the same yeah. one as game changers game, game changers. changers same shut okay. up so same producer i need everybody yeah. to understand this is this is pure Propaganda. It's pure propaganda. So here's the study. Lane did a great breakdown of the study and, and just took it down. So here's how they present it. We had two twins, so they have identical DNA, which is great. When you have a study, twin studies are... That's your golden goose. That's the gold standard because... It's the closest you can get two individuals. Yes. It's, yeah, to you, being alike. You have identical DNA. But yeah. you know we know with epigenetics and all that stuff, that's not necessarily true, but you're not going to get any closer than that. That's right, right. However... That's not the only thing you need to control in a study. 
So what they're doing is they're using twins and they're using that as a proxy for this is the best controlled study that there is. That's not true. The twins are controlled, but the diets were not. Here's what they did. They took two twins and they said, one of them's going to eat a quote unquote healthy omnivore diet. So a diet that includes meat and dairy. The other twin is going to eat a quote unquote healthy vegan diet. And at the end of the study, we're going to measure their blood markers and see if the, what the difference is. Here's the problem. The only good control that they had was the fact that they were twins. The diets themselves, besides being omnivore versus vegan, <clears throat> well, let me tell you the results. The vegan twin had better blood markers than the non-vegan twin. So, of course, everybody's like, yay, vegan diet's healthier. No, 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 not so fast. The vegan diet, number one, was 250 calories lower on average. So by the way, yeah. how, how do you not you control that? Lower. How, by the way, like we, just like, eating lower calories that's right. makes a huge difference. You could there's studies on high sugar. Yeah. There's shitty diets, terrible diets, but because they're low calorie, you see improvements in blood markers. So that alone How long was it too? Wasn't it like eight weeks? I don't remember. Yeah, it how was long really weeks. short. Eight weeks. It wasn't that long. Yeah, okay. it was eight weeks. So number one, it was less calorie. Number two, the vegan diet was high in the types of fats that are pro, uh, pro good cholesterol, pro health, things like polyunsaturated fats, like an olive oil and stuff like that. The omnivore diet was much higher in saturated fats. We know for a fact you take the average, by the way, this doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier. There's a whole debate around that, except for extreme cases. This doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier, but we know for a fact, if you took the saturated fat out of your diet, replaced it with fats from things like avocados, nuts, olive oils, that you will see improvements in blood markers. So the diets were not controlled. If the fatty acids were controlled, if the calories were controlled, what you would see would be nothing, mm -hmm. almost no difference. Except for this. Here's something that they, did, they, they didn't probably include in the documentary. At the end of the study, they asked them, would you like to continue this diet? The vegan's like, no, I don't want to fucking keep doing this diet. It sucks. <laughs> Now, why is that important? You know, yeah. I don't care how great. It's not sustainable. Even is that if it true is that's better, what happened? Yeah. That's funny. Even yeah. if it's a better option, I could construct the most perfect workout plan. It's going to give you the best results ever. You don't want to follow it. It doesn't yeah. matter. That matters. Yeah. Right. So anyway. And now that whole that's documentary, pure propaganda. Frustrating because you know we're going to have to like talk about it a bunch of times this year. Oh, I know. It'll be. People it'll... will get like swept into it. And, you know, because some, something about documentaries, especially, you got know, all the visuals, you got the way. Oh, that, storytelling. Like, storytelling. Yeah, yeah. storytelling. So much I mean, they're going to sell you. It just shows you the power of, of storytelling yes. right there. It's like yes. you don't even have to have that much truth in it as long as it's a good story and then people will buy into it. Yeah. So yeah. crazy, though, to me is like. It's the same people that did Game Changers. So it's like, and obviously, there's an agenda here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Come on, yeah. dude. Well, the agenda, if you if you truly, you got to put yourself in the mind of uh, like real vegans. Okay. I'm not talking about pretend vegans who do it because they, it's a fad or whatever. I mean, like real, real, real vegans. Yeah, like LA vegans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not because it's trendy. Like yeah. real vegans believe in their hearts. And I appreciate this and respect this, that it's wrong to harm animals in any way. So- if I was that person, then then the the end res the means would be no matter by by whatever means I'm going to save animals. Right, right. It doesn't matter what the studies even say. Right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm going to try and convince yeah. you. I'm going to lie to you. I'm because I don't want you to hurt animals. And if you eat a diet that's different, yeah. and I don't think it's necessarily bad, fine, whatever. I'm going to I'm going to trick you, lie to you, whatever I can do to save these poor animals. That's the motivation. So that's yeah. why this propaganda is such. Absolute garbage. Do you think that's where it's coming from? I mean, like, I like the well, actual. I mean, you want to go bigger? I mean, yeah, I mean, come on. Like, I think that's, I think that's the a, a, we'll a logical way to look at like the 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 vegan that feels that way because they, you know, they want to save animals that bad. But then, I, I mean, do you know that about the people who created this documentary? Like, are they like staunch vegans, like about saving animals, well, or are they it, more about climate? I and probably, it's probably money. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. money's always at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think because that's the that that's the opening line on the. Uh, or at least the preview, the opening like clip they use is them saying that like the number one thing we can do to reduce climate change right now would be to oh they're going to use every angle. What was it Canada. James Cameron was a big benefactor to the whole thing, right? The game changer, especially was he? Oh, I know yeah. he was for that one. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know. What was that? Who knows? You got to read that headline that you you sh you showed. Oh me. my god! Yeah. What was it? You have to read it. So this was from like the New York Post. This is the craziest. Like what a weird. 
time that we're in. This is what happens when people <laughs> worship the wrong things. Yeah. So the headline, and this is such a sensational headline. It says humans may be fueling global warming by breathing. New study. <laughs> Like, get the fuck out of here. Are you yeah. serious? Like, I, I didn't think it was a real, like, headline or, like, a real story. But obviously, they're getting better at, like, just, you know, clickbaity, like, oh, my God, this is in your face. This so everybody ridiculous. should die. Yeah. Because we're all going to talk about it. You know well, what I say to people who believe in this, this type of crap? Then go kill yourself. I yeah. mean, you want to solve the problem? I'm, go take yourself that, out. Isn't that what it's That's all coming down to? And it, I, I don't know. It's, it's I interesting. don't really want you to kill yourself. Okay, no, everybody, no. But I'm but just saying. It's just interesting, like how if you, if you look at sort of the trend of like, okay, well, okay, so if it, if climate change is this dire and like this is all crazy, like, and then, but now it just seems like every every bit of whatever's causing it is all human. Uh, created and so like okay so we're on board right we need to change our habits and we need to do this and that okay so we're we're doing that but then what oh but there's too many of us <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, there's no more room for you guys we so, should, so we start justifying like i mean what's the the end goal of this is like it's like genocide let's just oh let's just get rid of swaths of of the population yeah. because it's better for mother earth uh, yeah, you know, like is that where we're going to be? You know, in a position where it's like this is this yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you first. Yeah, that's what I say to that. I mean, it's going to accelerate before the other way. I mean, we're finding ways to to uh, increase longevity. So I feel like I mean, there's people that believe that we're going to have our generation is going to see like average of a hundred to. One I saw to, something on that. Yeah, people think that we're we're already heading in that direction. You know so. what I? You know what's crazy about that? You know what the biggest challenge is going to be <clears throat> if the average person lives to a hundred and twenty, a hundred and fifty. We're gonna have to reconstruct everything. Yeah. You're gonna, I mean, uh, uh, Social Security, retirement, like that's got to change. That's not possible to yeah. maintain that yeah, if you're yeah. gonna live that long. I, you also have to wonder. When's too, retirement kicking? Sixty-two. Yeah, I half? think it's sixty. Well, I think you can do as early as maybe sixty-two, but sixty-five. I think is. You know when they established that the life expectancy was like sixty-seven or something like that. Yeah. So you're gonna live to one hundred twenty. And you're gonna retire. See, that's that doesn't. That's how, who's gonna pay for that? I mean, doesn't you know? it also These feed right weird. into like my theory around the housing market going to like 40 year mortgages and so that that'll be normal? You know, what I'm saying 40, 50 year mortgages because like why? Well, yeah, average goes good. up with the uh, life expectancy. And then and that now now you, and because people only look at it like a payment, right? That they can afford. And so the fact that your entry level house now becomes a million dollars is no longer a big deal because it's like oh you got half your life to pay it off. It's a 50 year mortgage. It's like hmm. oh the payment's the same as what my dad's payment was yeah. on his. You know, what I'm saying like. But I also think it's gonna be a challenge because. 60, what is it? So you can get benefits at age 62, but they'll be less than if you wait until age 67. Oh, around the corner okay. for you, Doug. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> so. I'm going to hold out for the big payout, man. Yeah. I'm going to go all the way to 67. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Doug. Is it, how are we, we going to have to restructure the business when it comes around that age for you? Like, are you going to be able, so, so you can still dip into your retirement, but then also make side hustle with us? Like, we would like, yeah. is there is there a way? I, I don't think it matters if you make a million dollars a year Jesus. or something like that. You still can get your benefits. Uh, if you paid into them. Oh, you so no matter what, you can pull from that. I thought if yeah. you were working, you couldn't. That's not how it works? No. no. Oh, no. I didn't know that. You could still pull. No, think about people getting paid. The The amount is so low. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these people yeah. have to have a job in order to uh, to survive. So right. did you know that that's a big, that Social Security is literally a Ponzi scheme? Pyramid scheme. scheme. It's a Ponzi yeah. scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. yeah. 100% <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's a sophisticated pyramid scheme. Come that, on. That, yeah, that, no, for that's sure. Crazy. It's super wild. Yeah. So speaking of like conspiracies and stuff like that. So you guys know how, all right, we're in election year now so shit's about to get crazy everybody just prepare uh, yourself turn shit off wait can we we're just, we were just talking about all the meat can we talk about butcher box and how we're we're this is how much we're anti that movement to get rid of it is that we would take uh we would do advertising for them for free that's what i would tell yeah. them. <laughs> that's how that's how much i'm, I'm just I'm, to help everybody that's how much i'm against some. that movement yeah. don't tell butcher box this but yeah, no. we would we'd hey absolutely. you know what they have by the way yeah. i think they, they're gonna listen to this actually. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna try and do adam's that right i don't agree with that adam said this meat across america yeah come up with a new slogan did you know that they have what is it they have aged yeah so they have a age strip uh steak that you can get aged bone in strip steak yeah Ooh. i haven't had that yet I so i yet. had so i thought out a couple of them this weekend i cooked those and they were absolutely fantastic what makes okay so explain age to me obviously they what do they do with it well so it's not yeah, just old meat like yeah what, what's happening i so i don't know exactly how it works but they put it in an environment where i don't think it's refrigerated no it's left out it's left out oh. for say 30 days, 20, 30 days. And then what happens is there's a process that the meat, I think, breaks down a oh. bit during that time. It actually takes on a, a more, uh, I don't know, stronger flavor. I love it. But yeah. I love the flavor. Yeah, I've always thought of it as like the the ultimate slow cook. 
Because you keep it at like a room temperature. Yeah, but they got to do something to it. They put something on it, right, to break down the the fibers. You can't just leave meat out for look it up. Days, yeah, yeah, I'll look it up. Did, so yeah, it's, so it's dry well. aged. Um, so I, I think it's a very dry environment with no yeah. humidity. Yes. Oh, so, so that's yeah. probably why oh. nothing grows on it. Okay. Okay. Well, but let go. me look it up. Yeah. yeah it's, let's, no. Let's no. You're. Up. You're. That. You're right about. It. Like there. It's. An, it'll be in a room where there's like a humidifier. What about that? That's pulling all that out, all the moisture yeah. out. Yeah. Or a dehumidifier. Yeah. Dehumidifier. Yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, let's find that out because that's interesting to me. But I'm gonna try that. I always I get like just tri tips across the board and ground beef. Oh that's all I get from there. Well, yeah, I I mean I had the best beef tenderloin I've ever had, and it was Butcher Box, and I didn't even know it was Butcher Box. And Courtney made it for uh, Christmas this year, and we do it like this is like a new thing. I was like, I'm I'm just over turkey in general. It just mm -hmm. doesn't do it for me. Yeah. That's it's just hit or miss, and even then it's just kind of a boring meat to me. Uh, but uh, man. We had, it was so good. It was medium rare all the way through and then just crusted on the outside with some like salt pepper. Dude, it was so perfect. Okay, look what they do. So they, the air inside the dry aging chamber is constantly being circulated as the enzymes in the beef's cells break down proteins, fats, and glycogen. That, okay, so that's what it is. So you're, you, it's more tender because the fibers start to break down on their own. Mm -hmm. And wow, that's interesting. You know, it'd be really cool. I'd love to see Doug is if we could make shift our own at home. Like, could I create like a tent with a dehumidifier? I think you could. Yeah, mm. I would think you would be able to make. You a can room. actually buy machines or you know, chambers. Oh, oh okay. That like you can have at home. Yeah. Oh, and then dry age your own meat. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah, that's so something both you guys. Would I do. would. I would totally do that. That's a great yeah. idea for a present from you guys to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> Gonna have a hanging meat locker. In hey, I mean, I, I I know it's a butcher box. So I actually I actually cooked the most expensive steak I've you ever. Do. I did yeah. this this this. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, oh, yeah. we saw that. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it, was a, it was Japanese A five ribeye wagyu. How big? They actually came with like certificates, bro. That's how. But like, it has a DNA certificate that it came with. Because it was, it's like to prove. What? Yes. Wow. I'd never seen that before. Did you okay. see that, Doug? Did I show that to I you? I saw that, yeah. Yeah, it actually comes so with a, a DNA certificate. Are you comfortable? I'm sure you are. How how big were they? How much <laughs> did they cost? <laughs> of course you are. Uh, they, it was two two ninety a pound. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. And that's, you have to cook it yourself. That's, yeah, that's a butcher, yeah. So that's yeah, because like, if you go to a restaurant, oh, yeah, that would have been. Oh, yeah, would be a $1,000 steak at a restaurant. Wow. Yeah, 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 now, yeah. was it worth it? Um, I would say it, it was amazing, but- the difference between a, a three hundred dollar cut and like what I would say is a really good hundred dollar cut from there, I I don't think that it was. So it's like one of those things you do once. Yeah, I actually I wanted to do it just because I wanted. To, I was like, I want to get the most expensive yeah. cut I can get and see mm -hmm. it, to compare it to some of the other stuff that I've had. The tag have the name too. This was Fred. No, he it, it doesn't have life. a name, but it has a, no, a, ser a serial number, DNA match. It had like, I mean, it, and it comes with these little certificates and everything like that to prove that the, the, the DNA is, that's what it's, that's what it's official. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, um, I think I've made a hundred dollar steak just as good as that one. Um, but yeah, Katrina loved it. Have you guys uh, ever seen those memes where there's like cows and they're like in this field or whatever, and one cow's like, "You guys don't understand the the, the, the farmers killing each of us." We're like, what are you talking about? He feeds us. Yeah, he yeah. massages us. He massages oh, us. God. You're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. What are you talking about? Totally. You know? Oh, there uh, you go, Doug. Yeah, so you can get the dry agers. They're a few thousand dollars each. I also found that you have to have it refrigerated around like 34 degrees, so it's not. Room temperature. Oh, it's cold. So it is cold. It's cold. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. There's a cheap one there for 400 bucks. Oh, there you go. Then they oh. got some that are like 11 grand. Well, that one from Wayfair, 1200 bucks right there. That looks like a hold, would hold enough. I want to get it. Let's, do, let's get one, Doug. What do you say? Dude. Yeah, let's do it. Wait, yeah. you're going to share one together? I mean, we can split it and actually leave it here and just dry age our meat here. You know what I'm saying? Just have it in the corner? Yeah. Dude, that would be everybody so, can little, dry little age meat display. meat display. Yeah, then everybody can use it. <laughs> yeah. Go four ways on it. Sounds like a good company expense. <laughs> are you impressed? Yeah. Could you? I just display my meat. Bring it's our vegan friends over. Yeah. Just yeah. fucking meat hanging in the fucking studio. Have waters in there too, so they have to open. It? Yeah, oh, you want water going go yeah, in that fridge right there. It's, wow. this. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. Speaking of, of meat and conspiracies, I wanted to bring up this like video I saw. I thought it was hilarious, dude. This guy was like basically. He was tying in, like, you become, you slowly kind of become a, a conspiracy theorist when you get chickens. It all comes back to if you've ever owned chickens. What? I was what? like, what are you talking about? And then I was like, hmm, he's making some decent points here. Like, what? what? The so it, it's like when you realize that, like, when you get eggs and then you see the color and the vibrancy of, yeah. of like, you know, the Real. egg yolk yeah. and, and you see, you know, like how. It's very different. 
completely different. And then you start, he's like, and then the next logical step, that is like the produce. And then you start kind of like, you know, going to the farm and you see the difference and you see all many, how many nutrients you get and how many like you're, you're being deprived of when you go to the grocery store. And then you start like, you know, bottling up in these like little like canisters and you start doing this. And then, you know, the next thing from there is like, you start looking at all the bread and like, so you start making your own uh, sourdough and it's only like three or four ingredients. And you're like, why are they putting all this other stuff in there? And then like, it keeps going down this whole like rabbit hole of things. And then you start realizing, Brilliant. Like how fuck do you like, like where's this all coming from? None of this is good for me, you yeah. know. <laughs> and it's just like brilliant. It all starts with chickens. You brilliant. Know? That that is, is, wow. you, know, you know, along those lines, uh, you, you guys ever look at like you ever go on Amazon or ever look for survival food? You ever look at it? Do you know what I realized the other day? Huh. Survival food is basically terrible. Uh, it's it, they're terrible examples or representations of what we could get. That's ten times better that are protein bars, protein shakes, and stuff that's sold to the fitness market. It's the same thing, except grosser and worse ingredients. Why? Look them up. Look at look at uh, survival food bars. I've seen, I know, I've yeah. seen Look it. at the ingredients. I've, it's a shitty protein bar. It it's is. the kind, you would never eat it. Yeah. It has, the shelf life is high on protein bars and protein powder. Yeah. Too. So you I, think they got like a government yeah. contract or something? Like for some of these, I just think like, it's a different market. Survival, yeah. I think it's a different market. I don't think anybody buys survival food and tastes it and goes, I don't want this one. Yeah, I imagine I they go, nobody I, good's got I mean, I think about it, yeah. yeah. It's a different market, so you're not going to these these gym rats that are going to be consuming every week. These are people no. that are going to buy it and store it they and leave probably it. probably throw it away. So they probably put the, the worst and the cheapest wow. of whatever they can put in it's it. Shit. What a hustle. Yeah. So, so if you want good survival food, like literally buy shakes, buy <laughs> protein shakes and meal replacement powders and bars. They have long ass shelf life and it's got everything you need. It probably tastes, it tastes good. You've used it before. It's a better quality. That makes wow. Survival that's, food is garbage. That makes it's sense. absolutely garbage. Sense. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, uh, um, I had a really nice, uh, moment for Christmas. I want to share with, with you guys about with my, with my parents and I talked about it's like a like a dual thing with my parents, right? Hey, mom and dad. <laughs> friend quit. Hey, I'm doing drugs, but hey, yeah. here's this great hey. gift. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this will yeah. make up for it. Yeah, yeah. maybe it was a little bit. I, don't, uh, I hope there wasn't that. Uh, you gotta think about that. Whatever. No, no, <laughs> no. We were. I was. I was. Although you that. surprised all of us, I had no idea you were doing that. Yeah. Did you? I, I didn't. Either, I don't know. It was a last minute kind of thing. It so, was. Yeah, and it just that, actually no. You know what? Uh, just had nothing to do with um, telling them about the other thing. So, I was at my parents' house, and my dad was telling me how. So my dad, right, grew up very poor, very, very poor. He takes care of his cars like you wouldn't believe. Like he has an Acura. I know. I saw it. It looks, like, it looks like it's new and the thing's got like- 250,000 miles on it. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, pristine. The engine looks pristine. He'll right. clean the engine, like the tires, the inside. Like, okay, my dad takes care of his stuff. So he needs, he needs to get rid of it. It's 250,000 miles, okay? And that's what my mom drives. And my parents are both- my grandma's with my parents because she can't care for herself uh, anymore. And it's hard to, for her to get in. It's too low. So he was telling me about that. Like, oh, I got to get your mom a car. It's hard for your grandma to get in here. It's too low. The car itself is starting to have some problems. And I don't want to keep putting money into it. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look for some used cars. But they're kind of expensive right now. So, we'll see. you know, we're just having a conversation. So I go home and I said, hey, I told Jessica, I said, how would you feel if I bought my parents a car? She's like, I, I love that. Do that. So I went, told my dad, I said, uh, um, I'm going to get you guys the car. So my parents were like, what? Oh my God. My mom, you know, crying or whatever. So then my dad finds a car. I told him, you know, probably average price will be around this or whatever. He goes and finds what he wants and it's more than what I had said. So what he says to me, he says, I like this one, but um, I'll put the rest in. So I say, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, yeah. So we get there. And of course I pay for the whole thing. Uh, and my, yeah. My mom for two days, she's calling me crying. <laughs> it feels so good to be able to do that. Oh, I bet. For, for that. I bet that's going to feel amazing. It's not something, nothing fancy. It's not like I got them super crazy no, car. It's, but it's the fact that they, that they need it. It's the fact that they, they need it and they wouldn't, and they wouldn't ask for it, which makes it even more rewarding yeah. to give it to them that they, they know that they've known for a long time. Obviously you can afford to do something like that. And the fact that they don't ask, that's my, my favorite to give is to people like that. Oh, is, my yeah. parents would never ask. Yeah. Is when, when I know that you, you don't want it, you wouldn't ask for it from me. You don't expect anything like that. Those are, those are the most rewarding. Joyful. Yeah. It'll help. Yeah. Tremendous. Oh yeah, man. That's I so rewarding that. to do that. Joy, so cool. Joyful moment. As a kid, I used to think that I remember thinking that growing up, like I, I one, one day, I hope I can buy my parents whatever, a house or car or, you know, take care of them, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, it felt really good. And then, I don't know, did you ever tell the audience that you, your other, when you bought your new car, what, 
year or two ago, you gave your dad your other car, yeah. which was pretty much new too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that was practically brand new yeah, too. Yeah, so. it feels good, man. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. It's good to see that. And I and, and I, I can, you know, my dad was telling me how, <clears throat> you know, coming, you know, my dad's always struggled with living here in this country because there's a lot that he misses about uh, where he came from. But, you know, he told me he was, he said, uh, you know, I, I, you know, giving you guys opportunities and being here was, you know, was a good thing. It's really nice to hear that. Uh, from my yeah. Dad. yeah. So that's anyway, cool. Cool stuff. That's so cool. Well, we're supposed to mention Caldera. I want to say something about Caldera. I've probably touched on this before. So they have the skin oil that we all love and that we use. They have, and I want to make this point because um, I was reading up more on some of their ingredients and some of the ingredients in their skin oil are specifically designed to reduce inflammation in the skin which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So um, now inflammation in the skin can come from a lot of different uh, areas, including gut health, um, you know, it's like what you eat, environment, that kind of stuff. But when your skin is inflamed, the cells don't turn over, don't turn over the same way. You're going to have more wrinkles. You'll have more breakouts, that kind of stuff. There are specific oils in their face serum that are there to reduce inflammation. And you, who was it? Was it you that had sunburn? Yeah, put it on. Yeah, yeah. You saw that. Yeah, there it, it is. Did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why. I mean, I think. I think uh, what speaks to their their product is that, like, one, uh, we've talked about this before. That I never thought it was going to be something that like took off to our audience. It's not really like the. You think our niche audience would be, you know, supplement bars and shakes? Yeah, we have and beautiful like, dudes in our audience. Well, I, I think I think what it is, I think that even if you're someone who's skeptical, no, I never in my life did I religiously put on any sort of face serum or cream never. or any ever never. i never was Same. but i mean i remember the first time the very first time i put it in i'm going like oh wow i noticed a difference i feel a different and so yeah it works that's the power of something like that is you don't even have to be somebody who uses it and it's been that way forever i gift i gift it every christmas now so it's it, like, oh yeah. really oh yeah I, I, yeah there's yeah. enough guys in our family that, that are like me that wouldn't do that and then they all do and everybody loves it yeah Everybody, all the guys love it in our family now awesome. too. Mm -hmm. All right, so the so the shout out in ten days, we're gonna do the three day train the trainer free uh, kind of seminars. We already have a seven thousand attendees signed up signed up for this. Let's the goal go. is over ten. Can we get ten thousand people in, yeah. inside there? Um, if you're a trainer left. or a coach, or you work in health and fitness, um, you you want to attend. Uh, yeah. We'll be covering some some great stuff on how to really Im improve your odds of success improve the success of your clients um, and really just move in the right direction. It's, it's be awesome. It's free. And even if you can't make the time live, when it's live, Justin and I will be on there with Sal and we'll be answering questions live, engaging with the audience. Um, but even if you can't make that time, if you sign up, right, uh, then you'll get emailed the recording of that. And it's absolutely free. So if you are listening to this for the first time, you're not signed up, where's the website at to sign up, Doug? It's uh, mindpumptrainer.com. Check it out. There's a new product called Stress Guardian that uses 14 adaptogenic herbs perfectly uh, put together to help your body manage stress and adapt to stress. What does that mean? That means your workouts you recover faster from. It means you get better sleep. It means it's easier to get leaner, less cravings. That's what adaptogens do. They help the body deal with stress. And Stress Guardian, again, has 14 of the best proven adaptogenic herbs all in one capsule. Go check them out. Go to stressguardian.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jen from Ohio. Jen, how you doing? I'm speechless. Uh, <laughs> did you do that on purpose? Justin, <laughs> Justin has that effect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Remember the episode where you guys were talking about, does it really happen when People get so excited that they faint. With yeah. Their <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, syncope. <laughs> <laughs> get the Elvis effect. <laughs> I was just going to say that if yeah. I had been old enough for my parents to take me to see Elvis, I'd be like, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Look, you're going to yes. get a free program, Jen. Okay? I know. Thank enough. you for that. <laughs> any any now, comparison to Elvis. We're going to we'll hook you it. up. We're going to hook Don't you worry. up. No, what, tell, tell us what your question is. How can we help you? So um, I was hoping I'd catch someone's attention in my subject line with uh, 23 years of being a group fitness instructor. <laughs> you caught my attention. Uh -huh. What's up? All right. So um, started in personal training and exercise science in college and then uh, went into 
um, the corporate health scene and somehow working at the gym at um, a big company here in Cincinnati, um, they needed me to teach a fitness class. So I just went in and was like, okay, just taught it like I was teaching or training my clients. And it just progressed from there. Um, And now I am actually down to eight classes a week, um, along with my 19 clients that I do personal training with. And um, I just discovered you um, about two months ago. My coworker, Kate, hooked me up, and I haven't stopped listening since. I think I've gone over a couple hundred episodes. And um, anyway, I am really burnt out on those fitness classes, especially when I am teaching and I'm doing reverse lunges and somebody's just running up and down on the step. And then I have someone who has really tight shoulders and they just insist on doing dips instead of a push-up. It's, it's really, I quit a class actually two weeks ago. I'm just like, I'm done. Mm, Wow. So I still have to do my others, um, because I feel guilty leaving the members. Uh, they, they give me the guilt trip when you come back, when you come back and I'm just like, I just need a little break. So what would you do if you had 20 people in a room, you're giving a workout and they just go off and do their own thing. Oh, that I mean, Adam taught a phenomenal mm-hmm. mobility class. To, I think mobility works so well in a group setting. And that's really one of the only things that I would teach in a group setting. Like something where people would get into a position like a 90-90, hold it, and I could walk around and adjust people and put them in different positions. And I would feel good teaching that because it's more of an appropriate uh, application in a setting like that versus a workout. It's really, really reasons why we don't like group classes is, I mean, you named a few of them, Mm -hmm. teaching people to exercise and strength training in a group setting. Uh, you're so limited. It's so challenging and it, and it encourages the get through the workout, get through the movement, just sweat. You just get tired type of attitude. And so it's just not very beneficial. You know, what's your, uh, what's your relationship like with the, the gym owner? Well, so the gym owner, so this is a, a community center okay. Um, and we have a coordinator and I, I've wanted because, so I teach functional fitness twice a week to a large, large group, like 30, 35 seniors, mm-hmm. like the 60, mm-hmm. they are my best pupils. They, if I scratch my nose, they'll scratch their nose. Okay. Um, I do, I have to do every other week. I have to do a boot camp. Um, twice a week, I do a class that's called Strengthen. And then one night a week, I do a class that's called Total Body. And I try to work with the other instructor and find out what she's going to do the, the next night. And she likes just to do weights. So then they want cardio. So I'm like... Forever, I had been doing like the real high volume thing for now at this facility. That's how I've been lifting high volume because I would do the class with them. And um, it's you do, you know, I I would range it from eight reps up to 20. I'd time it lower body, upper body, opposing muscle groups. Um, So, anyway, I really don't have say and be like, I used to do a mobility class and they loved it, but then they, they took it away. Um, the members loved it, but they took it off. The so step. you don't have so, any, you don't have a say in what yeah, you that's such. I mean, technically I didn't, I just did anyways. Yeah. I was going to say so that you, was my, so a, at, I worked for orange theory for two years. I don't know how familiar you are with orange theory, but they have a very strict, uh, template that every coach in the entire country, they have a very similar philosophy as Starbucks. They want you to be able to go to any class anywhere in the country and it aligns with everybody else. Yet I broke those rules. Um, and my attitude was I knew I was giving a disservice to these clients by training them this way. I had better ideas on what would help them more. And I just slowly started to mold it 
to what I thought was a, a better class in course. And my attitude was, uh, you know, they, they can fire me or I'll quit if they won't allow me to do this. And what happened was my attendance grew and I was booked out for months in advance uh, and had classes bigger than anybody else in the area. And so they didn't mess with me. They kind of just let me do what I wanted to do because for them, it's about attendance, you know, and for me, it was about teaching and educating this group of people on a better way to approach health and fitness. With but integrity. it was, it was a slow process. It's not like I took uh, a turbo kickboxing class and said, okay, no turbo kickboxing. We're just doing mobility today. I would ease them in. And like at the end of every class, I would educate them. Like I'd, I'd say five minutes you know, five to 10 minutes when we would be doing our, the, the, the quote unquote, you know, cool down process of the class. And I would give uh, nutritional tips and I would explain, uh, you know, how, how, how the body works and different things about macronutrients and what the, what signal are we sending to the body when we're doing cardio at high intensity and low calorie and why that's not a sustainable way to train and what it does to your metabolism. And so I would give them these little bits of knowledge and so I was starting to slowly educate this group. And so then when I said things like, hey, when I when I tell you to stop lifting weights, I want you to stop and I want you to rest. And I don't want you yeah. to put the weights up until I tell you, you know, yeah, I know. I know. So that's that's the type of stuff that I, but I had to first build that credibility in my class, that my class respected me as, as, as someone that had this knowledge. And so I used our social media platform. I used the show, I'd reference episodes. And so I used a lot of that, the resources I had to educate the people. And then I slowly would implement what I thought was a better th thing to teach them in that class. And over time molded my own uh, workout routine in there. And so they, and they left me alone. And so I stayed now, had they told me, if you change it, you're going to get fired, then I'd be out. That's just how it Because I, I had enough integrity that it was, uh, this is not helping these people. This is not, I'm doing them a disservice when I know that they are starving their body of nutrition and they're running around like a rabbit for an hour. I'm not building muscle. I'm just not. All I'm doing is burning calories with them. And these people need to build muscle, build their metabolism, uh, work on, a lot of them had joint pain because they're doing all this high intensity stuff all the time and not feeding themselves nutritionally, not recovering properly. So I, I just refused to not, to not give them what they needed. And if, uh, the, not give them what they wanted, yeah, to give them what you need. That's right. And, and, and a lot of them thought these other things, what they wanted, but I had to, it's just like training clients one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes we have to, you know, slowly educate them and convince them otherwise. Yeah. Uh, but that was my goal if I was going to stay there and it, and it, you know, it ended up working out where the owner, didn't mess with me, and I had built a reputation around being the best coach in the area. And there's, there's Jen, Jen. We all manage gyms, okay? There is a <laughs> lot you can get away with when you bring in a lot of members, mm -hmm. okay? So long as you're not hurting anybody or stealing from the company, you'd be surprised at the le the the, <laughs> the space that they'll give you when members are really happy and you're providing right. a good service. Now, if you go, if you if you're lying, you're stealing. You're hurting people. That's a different story. So I wouldn't say anything to the manager. I would start the class yeah. and I'd say, hey, everybody, today's class, here's what we're going to do. And then I'd take them through. By the end of it, they'll feel the difference. The other mm -hmm. way I would do a group class is yeah. I would take an exercise or two yeah. and I'd break it up into stages. So I'd say, today, we're going to learn one of the most powerful exercises you could do to speed up your metabolism, the deadlift. We take a bunch of barbells or dumbbells or whatever, whatever your equipment is, and I'd start with like, I'd break it up into three, three. Start with like a dowel bar or like a stick. Yep. And I would go three stages. Okay. We're going to stand up together. Everybody stand up, get in this position, stay, maintain tension, walk around, squeeze your shoulders back over here, tuck your hips for a little bit, hold that position, go back to the front. All right, everybody bring the, all the way down the floor and pause. You know, and you're just, yeah. you're walking them through step by step. Those are the two ways that I would teach the class, but I wouldn't tell the manager, I would just do it. And what'll probably happen is nothing until maybe five or six classes in. They'll be like, what are you doing? Well, I'm teaching it this way. This is what they need. Yeah. That mm -hmm. actually, that actually like shoes into what I was going to bring up with how I was having the same issue with teaching these high school kids, you know, in a group setting, especially the strength training part of it, because inevitably it does get away from you. Like you can't cover all your tracks, but you got 30 something people 
So to to be able to have a little bit of control and maintain is is all about tempo and and to slow everything down to almost like a ridiculously slow level, uh, and to to have them um, go through the negative portion to pause and hold the and so you can walk around and you could actually see visually like the the grossest offenders, uh, and, and work your way over there to kind of help alter their uh, their posture their form, um, but really it it like it's so much more simplification necessary for group settings than, um, you know, the one-on-one. So you have to really eliminate almost the majority of the workout and just keep with like three to maybe four exercises max yeah. uh, to really, to really be effective. We didn't ask you this, Jen, but, uh, if, if you lost these classes, let's say the manager's like, no, I don't want you to teach it this way. You're no longer allowed to teach these classes. Would you be okay with that? Financially? Um, well, yeah, financially it's fine, but it's, it's the guilt that I have. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop you right there, Jen. I'm going to stop you. If you're fine financially, look, here's the deal. I'm going to cut you off because if my kids ask me for candy every day, all day long, I can't feel guilty saying no. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm not giving you the candy and you're sad about it, but that's not healthy for you to have every single day. right. Right. So you're the trainer, you're the coach, you're the instructor. If you, if your integrity tells you this is not the right workout for these people, this is not helping them, then it's up to you to make that decision. Now, if there's a financial issue, that was different. That, that's why I was, that's why I asked mm-hmm. that because in that case, I'm like, okay, we got to be very careful and tread carefully. But if you're, if you know what they need, then do it. And, and you might be surprised. Some people might fall off. Some people might quit mm-hmm. or complain, but you might be surprised that at the end of it, they're like, wow, I do feel a lot better. Wow. This is, this is really good. I really enjoy this. Um, so I would, I would do what they need. You're the teacher and the instructor. And then if they move, if the manager says, no, you're out, like you're, that's, oh, that's okay because you weren't They'll helping know them anyway. to find you too. Like, you, you know, your one-on-one services will take that's off. Right. Yeah. You Jen, know? are you, are you using uh Instagram? Are you on social media at all? Man, I would use, this is okay. What would, this would inspire me to build my content online yeah. around this. Right. So every time I see something in my class. That's a that they're not lit like you do a reverse lunge and they're just going up and down, up and down. Like I'm going to create a post around that. I'm going to one of the reasons why so many people in group classes struggle with weight loss is they don't understand the importance of rest periods and building strength. And if all you're doing is moving and moving with no rest periods, all you're really doing is cardio with weights. And this is not going to speed your metabolism up. It's not going to build my, like I would make a post literally addressing all the things that I see. You're always, you got all that hip and knee pain and you keep running on the treadmill. People yeah. don't realize they've got ankle mobility issues. They got hip mobility issues and they're doing this repetitive movement on the treadmill and all they're doing is making that issue worse. What they really need to be doing is de- addressing these things. And like, I would be giving away the answer to the problems that I'm seeing in this class setting and build social media. And then while you're in class and you're seeing it, say, you can let them know like, Hey, I did a post last week about this. You should read it or check it out. So now I'm starting to use that opportunity to feed my other business. I, um, I unfriended like all the members from my gym, like during COVID just, just because it was just getting insane. So I'd have to be like, hey, you can follow me again. <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would I would just teach the class in the way that you think that they need. And you explain at the end of class or the beginning what, what you're doing. Hey, today's class, we're going to be focusing on something called mobility. Here's how you're going to feel afterwards. You're going to feel less joint pain. You're going to feel more connected to your muscles. And you have more energy than you did coming into this workout. All right, let's get started. Like, you're the guide. Like, if I'm walking through the jungle and I got a guide in front of me, I might be like, no, I want to go this way. But if the guide is confident and saying, no, 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 we're going this way, and they start walking, I'm following the guide because I don't know what the hell I'm going. So you have to lead that and do that. Now, again, if the manager of the gym says, either you do the classes I want you to do or you're out, you say, look, this is counter my integrity. This is not what these members leave. I'm, I need. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't teach the classes. And then you're gone. You can't feel guilty for that because you're not helping them anyway. La- last, two right. th- last two things I want to give you, Jen. One, uh, I want to give you access to our forum. So do, are you in our private forum yet? No, no. I, I signed up for it and then I, I yeah. Okay. But well, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna put you in there for free. Okay. We have a lot of other coaches and trainers that are in there. She us too. And so, <laughs> yeah, and don't, yeah, don't block me on Instagram yeah. too. Okay. Follow me on Instagram. So, and then, 
And then the other thing is, are you signed up for our three-day trainer course that we have coming up in January? Of course I okay, am. Okay, good. Okay. So I just want to make sure you're signed up for that. I'm going to get you in the forum for free. Get in there. Say hi to us as soon as you get in there. There's lots of other trainers and coaches. Lots of them also have trained group classes. So share so they can share some of the ideas that's worked for them. Because I know it's I, I know the situation. I've been in the situation you're in. It's not as easy as we're making it sound. So any other ideas that we can get from other coaches and trainers, you, and then you can share with us that transition. Do you have you. MAPS Prime Pro, Jen? Because that's the program I'd pull from for the mobility class. No, no, I, I don't have Prime Pro. All right, I'm gonna send that to you, Jim. That's that. Go through that and pick movements out of that for your class. That'll be that'll be a great resource. Oh, that's good. Yes, that that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Um, so with the, I wanted to ask, like, with the training coming up, um, are we gonna have opportunities to talk to you about how to deal with all things personal training? Like, yep. I'm still after 30 years. I hate asking clients to pay me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's all. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be on yeah. there live answering questions and we're going to try and get to everybody. So yes, you will have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I have a list. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you know, real it. quick, Jen, I can even tell you here, look, and this is a problem a lot of trainers have because they view themselves as uh, helping others. So asking for money doesn't it kind of feels like, what am I doing? Like I, 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 I want to do this anyway, whatever. Um, like the, the, here's the deal. If you don't help yourself, you can't help anyone else. Plus, you're providing a tremendous and valuable service. Now, I know it still feels uncomfortable. That might not change the fact that it feels uncomfortable. So you have to do it very matter of fact. Ma very matter of fact means this. The less words, the better. Mm -hmm. Here's where people mess up. This is where trainers mess up. They ask for money in an apologetic way, and then they add more words than they need to. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so... 10 sessions is $1,200. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 120 sessions. You can this, pay but... it in half if you want to. And it's like this weird, like, you don't even sound confident in, in what you're offering. You just do it very short. Matter of fact, don't look at them while you do it. If you need to, look at the paper that you're presenting. Okay, so 10 sessions is 1,200. 20 sessions is 2,200. Which one do you want to do? Very matter of fact, very short. It'll make it easier. It's like firing someone. I remember the first time I had to fire somebody, it was so uncomfortable. My manager said, uh, do it very quickly. The less words you use, the better. And it was it was true. And it never got comfortable, but it would have been way less comfortable if I sat there and had this whole conversation about it. So, um, and you're not firing anybody. You're trying to help somebody. So it's 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 a completely different situation. How do we fire a client? <laughs> Same way. Yeah, these are all good questions. We'll cover a lot of this yeah, in the yeah. training. We we yeah. actually yeah 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 we and we got okay. something we we got something coming down the pipe specifically yeah. for trainers. Already the stuff yeah. you're asking we we address. So you're gonna like it a lot. A ton. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Jen. Thank you. Take care. You got See it. Ya. Boy, does she not represent a like a significant subset of trainers that we've worked with so many times yeah. where they have, they're have they afraid of asking for money. They don't want to let their clients down. The client basically dictates the workouts and the sessions. Listen, this is, this is going to be the most unique. I was just talking to our NCI group the other day. The most unique part about our course. So many people have been asking, what is it like? Is it like NASMs like this? No, it's nothing like that. It's like, we still are going to recommend that you get a national cert for the you know nutrition physiology uh, program design type of of content, but really it's th th this stuff that none of them talk about. That's right. Yeah. Yet we 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 dealt with our entire career these challenges of how do I ask for the money? How do I know what to charge yeah, for that? What, if what do I show? What yeah, if they, they don't show up? What if they say this? What do contracts should look like? How do I present? A lot of a times, year? the reason trainers just fall off. That's right. And so that was the idea: was instead of us trying to compete with the hundred certifications, national certifications out there. To me, that's that's the easy path. What was what we wanted to do was address the gap or the need mm -hmm. in the education process for trainers on how to be a good coach and trainer and scale their that's business. That's right. And you look again, just back to what she was saying. Like you're the trainer, you're the coach. You have to lead this, and the only way to lead is with confidence. Nobody's going to follow you in a dark cave if you're walking in scared and like you don't know where to step. You have to move forward with confidence. That means when you ask for money. That means when you give recommendations or we, what kind of exercise they need to do. Yep. And that means when you tell them what exercises there. not what to do. Want. Take you us know? there. Bottom line. Our next caller is Kayla from South Carolina. Hi, Kayla. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for allowing me to come on and ask a question. Super nervous, but also very excited to be here. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I'll dive right into my question. 
So my question is, are the spin classes that I teach preventing me from or slowing my progress toward reaching my goals? Um, so just to provide a little bit of background, I have been working out, I, I guess I should say lifting off and on for about the past eight, nine years. Um, I did, I had a little stint there where I did some beach body and some other methods sprinkled in there. But for the most part, for the past 18 months, I've been consistently strength training. And since the beginning of 2023, I've been really focusing more on programming or following a program, um, have not followed one of your guys yet. So I think that's definitely part of my problem, but, um, just getting more consistent with strength training. I have definitely gained strength. I brought my, um, back squat from about 140 at the beginning now up to 180. Um, my deadlift really have had some struggles with form, but I've also increased that hip thrust bench overhead press. So everything has increased, um, but I don't know if I'm really where I want to be. And I would say more aesthetically. Um, so I did an in-body scan back in the summer. Um, I was roughly 135 pounds. I'm about 5'3 um, and about 22% body fat. My goal is really to reduce that body fat down to closer to like 19 to 20%. Um, I have been trying to reverse diet and that's where the spin classes kind of come into play. So I teach sweat cycle. So it's hot spinning. Um, um, two to four times per week, really just I'm scheduled for four classes per week. Sometimes we don't have anyone show up. So just depends on what attendance looks like. Um, so I've been trying to reverse diet just to get that extra fuel. And I went from eating probably 1500 calories up to about 2200. Um, but every time I get up to that number, I get a little bit nervous, and then I kind of jump back down. So for the past three weeks, I've kind of jumped back to about 1800 and I have stayed within the same five pound range. Um, of course, that fluctuates day to day for the past about three years. Um, I've definitely changed. I've gained some muscle, but overall, just really want to lose some of that body fat, continue, continue to build strength and just not sure if teaching this many spin classes a week is preventing me from hitting those goals. If I'm overdoing it on the strength training and if I'm eating too much or not enough for really where I need to be. What, what are your options with the spin classes? Are you, can you stop teaching them? Like, or, or is this something that you need to do to supplement your income? This is part of your job. Cause my answer is going to be different depending on, on what the deal is there. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to stop teaching them because one, it's a foot in the door. I would Ideally, I'd love to go into coaching or training. Um, I work in sales and I financially can't really take the leap where I just start doing that. I also have a seven-year-old, so um, don't want to dedicate okay. all my time. I've really been on the fence, but I feel like this is a foot in the door um, to the gym if I do decide to go in that direction. So that's part of it. Um, not, I don't really need to do it financially, I guess. It's nice to have a little bit extra income, but of course then it provides a free gym membership. So a few other um, factors okay. with that. If you don't want to, if you don't want to not do this, because is it affecting your ability to build muscle, which then affects your ability to you know burn body fat? It's yeah. It's not helping. It's not ideal, but um, you're getting endurance stamina. You're being active. It's not like bad as long as you're not overtraining. Okay. So if you don't want to quit it, then you're going to have to do the following. You're going to have to get rid of your scale and you're going to have to stop doing your in-body scans for a while because the okay. thing, the obstacle that's in the way right now, the big obstacle, here's what's preventing you from hitting your goals is you. And I don't mean because you're not doing the work. I mean the mental aspect of it. The fact that you're hovering within the five pound range and once you go up to certain cal caloric uh, intake, you start to freak out a little bit. The scale yes. and the in-body scan is not helping you. So you got to get rid of those and you, and then keep doing the reverse dieting. And the only thing I would track is your strength in the gym. That's the only thing I would track. Am I getting stronger okay. on these core lifts? And if that, if those numbers are going up, you're moving in the right direction. I, I actually think too, I, I'm looking at her current lifting as five days a week too right now. I oh, bet wow, you if she moved, I think if you just, if we just sent you maps anabolic yeah. And then if you tried to do two days instead of four days of coaching spin, I think that in itself with a reverse diet okay. oh yeah, you'd build a lot of muscle. is the way to go. By and the way, if you gain muscle, so Kayla, if you built five pounds of muscle, which you wouldn't yes. look you wouldn't look bigger, you would just be more sculpted, right? But if you built five pounds yeah. of muscle you'd be leaner. and gain no body fat, be leaner. you would be leaner. Because your, yes. your your total body weight now is higher, but your body fat has stayed the same. So now it's a smaller percentage 
of your body weight. Okay. So you don't have to lose body fat if you gain muscle without gaining body fat. I, and you I, can do that with a good reverse diet and good strength. Training. I literally think if you just, we're okay. going to send you MAPS Anabolic, follow MAPS okay. Anabolic yeah. to a T, don't add anything to it. Try your best okay. to only do two days of spin class. Try, try to avoid the four days. In fact, okay. maybe even on the times when you do four days, if you have to, it's four days. I might only do two days of MAPS Anabolic that week. Yep. And, okay. and, and, and increase your calories, 250 to 300 calories. That's it. And just stay okay. the course, mm -hmm. trust the process. Give me at least 30 to 60 days to show you some, some you'll see strength gains probably first yep. Yep. and feeling good. Yeah. And do not sweat the scale up or down. Don't wait. Don't even weigh to, yourself. Yeah. I, I don't care about three to five pounds north or south, really. In fact, I'd be more concerned if I saw it going down right away because then that would tell me I'm not giving you enough calories for what we're doing. So I would like your, okay. yeah, I would like scale weight to probably hover around the same or a slight increase, but that should be kind of the goal. That in itself, I think is going to solve. Uh, that, that, kinda, that'll yeah. be huge. Yeah. Kayla, I, do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? <clears throat> No, not at all. Okay, so you were in sales and you have a seven year old yeah. and you're yes. so, and you're and you're adding another job with okay, so I'm gonna assume you probably are very busy and you have a lot of stress. Yes, I would say so, here and there. Okay. Are you uh do you have help with your with your kid? Yes, my husband is very involved. Okay, very good. Okay, so um do you how do your hormones feel? How is your energy, uh sleep? skin, hair, digestion. Do you notice any, any areas there? Like, are, do you, uh, uh, do you have a regular period? Like, are there any signs that you might be overdoing it? Like the classic signs that your body needs to kind of reset? Um, I definitely had signs, um, back probably when I first really started focusing on strength training and I was only eating 15, 1600 calories, um, like some hypoglycemia, Okay. really low blood sugar at certain points in the day. So I started increasing the calories and that has definitely helped. Um, I've been loosely diagnosed. I went to an endocrinologist. Um, my husband and I have sort of been maybe trying to have another, not, not trying, I guess you could say, yeah. and I mean, really just haven't had success. Um, but that could be a number of factors. Yep. So I did see an endocrinologist, um, and was sort of loosely diagnosed with Hashimoto's, but then she ran some tests and yeah. basically said, Oh, you're fine. Um, didn't I'm a root cause person and she really wasn't going to help me yeah. dig into the root cause. Um, so I joined your guys, um, mind pump hormones page on Facebook and hoping yeah. to eventually see a functional medicine doctor when financially I can do so. Um, but I mean, I sleep about seven hours per night. I do wake up on the days I have morning classes. I'm waking up around like 4.30 in the morning. Other days, it's typically five. I definitely like to be in the gym five days a week just because I need that for my mental health. If I don't start my day with a workout or some type of movement, then my whole day is just, I'm exhausted. Um, you're over, but I mean, for the most part, I feel good. You're overdoing it. Are you, are this classic, okay. like, yeah, like all the stuff you're telling me. Um, it really yeah. does. Yeah. It really does sound like it. Do you have a regular period? Is it pretty consistent? Yes. Okay. Good. That has been, um, for a few years. Okay, good. I, the bumping calories and the two days a week of strength training, if you're consistent okay. with that, I think you're going to see more than you expect. I think you're going to be very, very pleasantly surprised with how amazing you feel just from the cutting okay. from, yeah, from going from five days a week of strength training with the spin to two yeah. days a week of strength training with the spin and a bump of 250 to 300 calories, I think it's going to blow your mind within about 45 days. I think within a 45 to 60 day period, you're going to be like, wow. I, and I want you still to go to the gym five days a week. Cause I don't like disrupting somebody who's, who's created that space for themselves and that there's probably a, a yes. major mental act. But what I want you to do on the off days is literally walk, uh, okay. sauna or, or mobility, mo or mobility, mobility, like, mobility would be best. So okay. th those types of things, re recuperative type of stuff. Okay? Yeah. Like you're going there um, for rejuvenation. Yeah. So still go there. But if this is, okay. if this is the off, not your foundational day, walk on the treadmill yeah. for a half hour, 45 minutes, do some mobility for 10 to 15 minutes, maybe do the sauna for 15, 20 minutes or a cold plunge, do those types of things on those days. Also, okay. MP Holistic Health. I know you mentioned our our uh, yeah MP, MP Holistic hormones, Health is holistic the place. Holistic Health. You'll be able to get more functional medicine related uh, information. That's our okay. functional medicine forum on uh, Facebook. And then, lastly, okay. because you are aspiring to make the transition to be a trainer, did you sign up for the free course that we have in January? 
Yes, good, I good. did sign up for that. I'm excited for that. Good, so yeah. Thank you, guys. Good, 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 good. I'm excited good. to see you in there. And if you don't have Maps Anabolic, we'll send that to you because that's the program you're going to follow. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. You got it, All Kayla. Right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Um, she's if she's if she follows what we say, yeah. it's going to blow her. You know, it's you know, it's so crazy as she's talking. It's so funny. Like we've trained so many people, right? Every once in a while we'll get a question. I'll be like, oh my God, that's just like so-and-so. I, did, yeah. I literally remember, literally I had a woman, very similar, came to me, same thing, lots of strength training. She did power yoga and spin classes and I cut everything way down and it was the same thing. Her and her husband were loosely trying to have a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't even say anything about that. It was all about like, let's just build your metals, get you strong, whatever. It got pregnant. She got pregnant mm -hmm. <laughs> within 30 days. Yeah, so sometimes, yeah. That's what it takes. Our next caller is Tracy from Massachusetts. Hi, Tracy. How can we help you? Hi. Um, first of all, thank you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Um, right. I'm calling uh, because I'm in like a bit of a training dilemma. Um, I just had my first baby in March. Congratulations. I'm, thank you. Um, I'm hoping to have more. Uh, before I got pregnant, I'd been training for over a decade consistently. I have a pretty strong resistance training background. Um, I was starting to get a little bit bored at the gym. Um, and then I got pregnant and then you know, I'm, I'm more worried about taking care of my baby. Uh, and I think a lot of the problem lies in, uh, kind of what you guys talk a lot about is being like coasting versus kind of towing the line, pushing the limit all the time. So when I was pregnant, it was really mentally hard, not really physically hard to get to the gym, uh, because I didn't want to push myself too much. Uh, then I gave birth in March. It went really well. Postpartum feel awesome. Um, but I'm kind of worried about looking into the future. You know, I, I kind of feel lost in the gym, you know, with wanting to have more kids relatively soon. I'm about to turn 35. So I'm kind of like, putting that up. you know, being older and I don't really know how to either shift my mindset or to shift my goals to sort of look forward to getting to the gym while, um, you know, being pregnant or postpartum or nursing. Tracy, this is, I love this question because fitness fanatics who have kids or things pop up in life that become more important than the workouts will hit this crossroad. So you live for a long time. Strength training was probably your favorite thing to do. It says in your question, you competed in Olympic lifting. So you didn't just like recreationally work out. Like this was a big deal. This was very serious for you. But now you have a kid, which first of all, if you're a good person, which it sounds like you are, having a kid is going to shake everything. They're, like all of a sudden, there's nothing more important than this other human being. And so all the other things that you leaned on, you have to kind of put them in new categories. Like what does this mean to me? What, what, okay, how do I do this thing again now that I don't care about it like I used to because I have something else that I care so much more about? Here's the beauty about with fitness. If you do it right, it will improve your life. Your life is what you want it to be, right? So you want to be a great mom. You want to be a great partner, a great whatever. Being fit will, will help that out. It'll encourage that. A fit, healthy version of you is going to be a better mom than an unhealthy version of you. So when you go to the gym, instead of going to the gym like you did before, I'm going to hit a new PR I'm going to hit a new intensity. I'm going to go train my, my butt off. It's really about how can I exercise to give me the energy I need, to give me the patience that I need, to give me what I need to do the, the more important things in life. Now, here's the other side of that, which is pretty cool. What you did to build your strength and physique, to maintain it, you need far less. The data on this is really remarkable, okay? Like literally – if it took you 20 sets of a particular exercise to build a foundation, you could literally do three sets to maintain that. So you don't have to keep doing what you did to keep what you've built. You could do far less. And your life is going to change. Uh, this is like right now you have a baby. At some point, they're going to be a toddler, then a teenager, then they're going to go to college. Um, and then you'll have more time to work out again, in which case 
the workout's going to change again. So right now it's just a different chapter in your life and literally just go to the gym and think to yourself, like, what do I need to make me better at the things that are important right now? And it may be that you need more energy because maybe your sleep is not as good. Maybe you just need a break because you got to get out of the house because you're not seeing anybody for a while because you got a new baby. Maybe it's just to alleviate some stress or maybe you got some energy and you're like, you know, I'm gonna go see if I could do what I used to do. Let me go see how hard I can go. But that's how you should treat the workouts because your life is going to continue to change. And what you don't want to do is fall into this, like this trap where it all, the workouts always have to be and mean the same thing to you because that's going to be really hard to maintain when your life changes as it is now. Tracy, you know what I think the hardest thing for clients like you, and I would put all of us in this exact same category as to when, when big shifts like this happen is our definition of fit. I really think that we have this, we have a, we have a different way. We look at ourselves aesthetically performance in the gym that we've, we've raised the bar and the standard so high. And then all of a sudden life happens and other shit that's far more important than my PR and my squat or my six pack abs. And, and I'm wrestling with what Sal just said, which is, you know, he just telling me that, you know, a fit me is going to improve all the rest of my life. But your definition of fit is, is skewed like mine is. And that was the hardest thing that I had to wrestle with when, when I decided to make that shift of like, I care more about being a better father, a better husband, a better business partner, but yet I don't want to get fat or I don't want to be out of shape. And it's like, so how am I juggling? What does that mean? Yeah. But my, my definition of fit was so skewed. It was like, I had, I had to make peace with that. It's like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, I don't need to have, I don't need to be look like a bodybuilder year round like this. And and nor am I going to be able to, and truly be a, a fully present father and crush at all those things. So I think what happens is people like us really wrestle with trying to sustain that level. And it's, it's, it's not realistic while you also are trying to have multiple babies and do all these other things. So Part of it is making peace with with the body changing, looking a little different, performance probably being a little less. You're, you at 50% is still better than 99% of the world, yeah. right? And so you have to kind of you have to kind of make peace with that. One of the ways that I did is I would I would shift my focus. So if you were an obsessed person with aesthetics, I let go of aesthetics and became mobility guy. And I started to look at other things. If you're obsessed with PRs and strength and gym, I let go of that and began and, and focus on something else. Longevity girl. Like, I mean, become, start to challenge yourself on the things that you most identify with when it comes to fitness and, and pursue other aspects of health because, you know, getting good sleep, uh, reading more, being present as a mother, being a better father, better, all these things, uh, make me a healthier person. And so if I'm truly- You're all a, new challenges. That's right. And mm-hmm. so I think sometimes uh, us hardcore fitness people, we we get so focused on the performance and the look that when life shifts, we have a really hard time uh, seeing that kind of change a little bit, and we and we think we're failing. You know, I'm, I'm, you're always because you don't have the same squat that you were doing back when you were doing Olympic lifts and training seven days a week. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like really though, like you're still squatting way more than anybody else, and you're still really strong for a mom with multiple kids and working and a husband and all these other things going on. And so you have to really shift your your perspective and definition of what you think fit and healthy is, and sometimes. For us fitness fanatics, it's a bit skewed, and that's really the biggest challenge here is accepting that, you know, you might look a little different than what you did, you know, four years ago in your prime, or you might not perform exactly the same way, and that's okay because you're a fucking awesome mom, and you're super present with your husband, and you're doing all these other things that you're winning in life. That's what I think is probably one of the hardest things when when you're in the situation you're in. You know, by the way, Tracy, the, 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 what you're going through – uh, is very common. So a lot of people go through this, especially moms where they're like, you know, I was like an executive. I was so focused on my job. Now it's like, I'm not that motivated to go to work. I just want to be with my kids or I was so into this other thing. And now I just want to, you know, or I used to hang out with these guys will go through this when they become dads. It's like, well, I used to hang yeah. out with my buddies yeah. and now I got kids and it's, I don't want to hang out with them. Like I used to, they, they want to drink and talk about other stuff. And I just want to so this is a super, I mean, this is a totally Maps 15 normal. is a program for you. Yeah, you got, Ma- I was just going to say, do you have Maps 15? Do you have our Maps 15 program? 
No, I don't. That's the program yeah, for you. Yes. Needed. We're going to send that to you. And literally, you do a little bit of exercise every day. Yeah. And it, there's an option where you can Thanks. do it at home with a suspension trainer, or you could go to the gym and use a barbell. And it's like a, either a 15 or 20 minute workout a day. I think it's the perfect workout for parents. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, you got it. You got yeah. it. And let, let us know how it works out for you. Sure. All right, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Right. There's, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I heard the baby there. Yeah. She's got the she's got the look of a new mom too. Like, oh, what am I doing? This, this baby, I don't know. You know hey, hey, listen, you have a kid; it changes everything. And oh, all of yeah. a sudden, you question, like, you have to re, you have to completely reorganize your priorities. Everything's new. All yeah. new challenges. Everything you guys are describing. And I mean, I could chime in on what you guys were talking about, but it's it's the the whole new focus now is is how to be you know the best mom and how to you know handle that and how to handle the time. Uh, restraints and and how to handle your stress and how to feel good and how to you know totally. so it all that stuff you can accomplish that within your workouts it just has to be structured uh, with that mindset of like what's going to be best for me now it's a massive reflection time for people like her like us because most of us if not all of us that got into this space that became fitness fanatics did it because of some sort of insecurity or some radical pursuit whether it be a selfish one. And then you or, make an identity. And you, be, yeah, exactly. And you then you identify with this person. Gotta and now dissolve like, it. And now you're like, who am I yeah. now? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, for the first time in your life, something becomes way more important than that. And and, and I remember this, like it up and that was the, the one of the biggest defining things about becoming a father was realizing like, oh, wow, never in my life did I ever truly care about anything more than myself. I mean, there's a lot of people and things I loved but there was never anything that I truly cared about more than myself until having a son. And then that radically shifted. And then that made me look at like, well, who is this character that I've worked so hard to become? And you have to solve this. Otherwise, you end up resenting the child yeah. because you yeah. can no longer live up to this Olympian. Now they're or, keeping or, you from being who you're supposed to be. That's right. Yeah. And, the, and the truth is, no, that person is still, a lot of what drove that person was rooted in these insecurities of not being enough or needing to look a certain way or being teased when you were younger. And now, now that you have this human that is far more important than yourself, you've got to address it. And you have to recognize that, man, I could, I could actually be a really healthy person and it doesn't take a lot. Mm -mm. It does not take a, what was that study the other day about, uh, it's once every two, two weeks, weeks to just to not lose muscle not for lose the average person. Yeah. yeah. It's like ridiculous. And by <laughs> the way, that's not a person who's as trained as she is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So imagine she somebody who's built as much muscle and strength. She'll be fine. Mass 15, she'll be totally fine. That's yeah. like, you, yeah. like that person just don't eat like an asshole and touch some weights every once in a while, but build your routine around being a great mother, a great partner, and that aspect, and the rest will fall in place. Our next caller is Noah from Ohio. Noah, what's happening? How can we help you? Fellas, what is up? This is crazy. It's been what's listening up, man? to you all since early 2017. So yeah. Going on seven years right now. Yeah, so to be true, here. true OG. It. Good deal. What's that? True OG. Oh, yeah. I was actually uh, in the top 2% of your listeners from like the Spotify wrapped allegedly so <laughs> the elites <so> yeah <laughs> good deal man well thanks how can we help hey. you yeah i'll kind of hop right into it so a little bit of background 29 years old um grew up a three sport athlete 5 10 180 pounds but really been doing like consistent resistance training since i was about the age of 16 um after watching all the arnold movies kind of similar as that right so basically how it kind of works right now Every two to three months, I try to switch up my programming from like a push pull leg split to like a full body routine to like the bro split, always just trying to change it up a little bit. The main thing I'm kind of having issues with, and I know this has been discussed before, is um getting really like stiffness in my lower back after doing barbell back squats specifically. Sometimes with RDLs, not as bad with RDLs, but really with the barbell back squat. Now, the past few years, I've really been making the barbell back squat like one of my favorite lifts to try to perfect. Um, after listening to you all, you introduced me to Squat University. I regularly follow that content and I really try to focus on the hip mobility, the ankle mobility, where I'm loading the bar. Um, I, I feel like I'm doing everything right, right? I do like a 10 to 15 minute priming session before each squatting session. And when I'm doing the movement, I, I feel good. I feel balanced. I feel powerful. But 
towards the end of like of the workout with the squats and really later on that evening and the next morning, my lower back is just extremely stiff and tight. And I don't know why it is. And I feel like what I'm doing right now is enough to where like I shouldn't be really having that pain. I do have a sedentary job. I work from home and as an account executive, I do walk my dog about two to three miles every single day. I do priming and mobility before every workout, before bed every night. I try to do static stretching. Um, and it's more so, I would say it's more so on my right side compared to my left side. Um, but it's still kind of like on both sides of the lower back. It's not like an excruciating pain. I can kind of pinpoint it with my thumbs. Yeah, it's not it's not going down like the back of my hamstrings, back down into my calves. Adam, I think you alluded to in the past that you had some issues with this. You can keep me honest with that statement. But like, I'm just kind of getting frustrated right now because I love I love squatting. I love the feeling of it. But like, when I wake up the next day, I'm like, man, this like it's, something's not right. But when I do it with Bulgarian split stand squats, uh, goblet squats, uh, hack squats everything feels fine. I do not Noah, get that stiffness. So I, I, I think I kind of know what the answer is going to be, but with your guys' experience and expertise, I'm just kind of getting frustrated at this point. Guess, and then I have a second part, but then we'll, what I've been to that too. All right. Let's, okay. So I'm pretty, pretty sure I know what your issue is just, and I was going to ask you if you feel it more on one side or the other, yeah. do you, do you know where the QL is? The yes. quadratus lumborum muscle is? Uh, no, I don't know exactly. What okay. So this is know. a, so, so this is a muscle that's along the sides of the spine. It's a, it's a stabilizer muscle, but it does work with lateral, Stability. lateral flexion extension. Okay. So this kind of side to side type of thing. Um, the reason why back squats bother you more than like a rear, uh, like a, like a, a deadlift or a stiff legged deadlift or Romanian deadlift is because the lever is much longer with the weight, with the barbell squat requiring more lateral stability. So when the barbell's on my back, this side to side stability, more of it's required than when the barbell is down here much lower. And you're probably pretty strong. You've been working out for a while. What do you squat with typically? So if I'm squatting heavy, um, anything heavy for me, I consider 275 and yeah. above. Okay. Um, so sometimes I I'll go lightweight with just like 135 or 225 to do that full range of motion but I do have the butt wink when I squat. So I'm trying to actively avoid that. So sometimes I just go to 90 to where like, I feel like my form isn't breaking down. I, okay. So I would do, um, uh, windmills. Windmill, yeah. Get really strong at windmills. Get really strong with windmills. Um, okay. I would do suitcase carries. So suitcase carries for that QL stability on the opposing side. And I think just the, in fact, in fact, you should try this next time you go do a barbell squat, literally mm -hmm. begin and then end your workout with windmills. I would do windmills mm -hmm. before the squats. Be a great primer, yeah. With no weight, just body weight, just kind of move exactly. through the motion. And you might even find as you do a windmill, oh, that feels kind of weird. After yeah. the barbell squats, add a little bit of resistance, see if you still hurt the next day. But I think windmills and suitcase carries, based off of what you said, will probably because it because you're the way you describe everything, it's like it keeps saying to me QL, lateral stability, yeah. lateral stability. When you uh lay down flat on your back and then bend your knees at 45 degrees. How much of a gap do you have where you can put your hand underneath your low back? Have you done that before? Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a gap there. Little, yeah. or can you like literally fit your arm in there? I can, not my arm. I would say definitely like, like my hand, if it's flat. Okay. So I don't think it's like anything it's severe, but it's still, okay. That's, that's, still feel like that's okay. That's right okay. I can fit my arm, that. bro. That's, that's how bad I was. I was so mm -hmm. bad. I could fit my arm all the way under this that had an excessive anterior pelvic tilt. So that's why I was asking. Cause I wanted to know how, yeah. how bad it was. If you can fit your hand slightly under there, that's pretty normal. Most people are, or everybody should have some sort of a, a curve like that. So that's not, that's not bad. How do you feel when you squat with like squat shoes or elevated heels? So I feel great. Yeah. I feel great when I do that. Um, I'm trying to avoid that though. Cause I just want to get good at the back squat. Like I just, I just want to like, like have that be my baby. Yeah. Um, and Adam, I know you said in the past, like you really had to work at like your, your ankle mobility. And in my head, I think I am, but like, I know you said, like you had to spend like years working on this. Like, like, what did that look like? Like, would you do it like three or four times a day? Cause I feel like I'm yes. doing it enough. Yes. It would be so probably, I'm probably not. So, yeah. uh, so the advice I give on the, I, I was obsessed with it. Um, now I was lucky because I had this job. This was back when I was working for orange theory. And it, when you worked at Orange Theory, one of the things you, you I taught classes and I would teach, you know, four or five hours of classes straight. 
and I'd have these, I'd have these, uh, the microphone <laughs> on and in, in the class, you send the, the class sometimes on these two minute, three minute runs. And anytime I would do it, it would be the only time I wouldn't be coaching. They would literally be just running or rowing for two or three minutes. Every time I did that in a class, which would be multiple times in an hour, four hours in a day, I would get down and just do like the 90, 90, or do get down and do the uh, combat stretch on each side. I would kneel down do it for a, a minute on one side, a minute on the other side, and then I'd pop right back up. I just started to make that a habit. Like any time I had the opportunity to just get down there and drive the knees forward, and then I finally got to a place where I could actually sit down comfortably, which right now I could hop down in a squat, sit all the way down, rested. And then even when I'm doing that, I'm not just sitting there rested. I'm still trying to push my knees forward and really activate, right? So I'm not just resting in that position. I'm always trying to drive the knees forward and get more range of active range of motion there. And yeah, it's more about frequency than it is intensity. So you're better off as many times you can every single day doing it for just a, a minute then you are scheduling a 20-minute block of mobility two or three days a week. So frequency of that is is the king. And it does. It take it took me a solid year, I'd say, to see some pretty really good progress. Two years to feel like I solved it. I mean, after after that, like to I to this day, um, I don't have issues uh back squatting anymore. But I literally, after every if I re if I squatted over 10 reps, uh, barbell back squat and I had any sort of depth past 90 degrees I would be laying on the floor doing like afterwards because my back would just be on fire pumped just super pumped and tight and like you're saying I didn't have sciatica I didn't have any issues or any other pain anywhere just the low back would get so tight I and would so I would guess yours was probably more erector spinae fatigue and pump in his like are you feeling the back pain right away or is it like the day after so it's typically like the evening, like the evening after. Yeah. Typically, I work out after work. This like sounds five, like six o'clock. No, QL, this sounds like morning. QL. This is like you're. It's screaming QL. So, when somebody who's a beginner or just getting started, or maybe they had a previous you know injury or whatever, when they're telling me, uh, you know, they have low back pain, it's often you know core stability issue, could be hip, you know, mobility, that kind of stuff. When you get somebody who's been working out for a while, who's who's pretty strong. And they're noticing like, man, I work, I do everything right, do the mobility. I notice, you know, then my, my back just hurts, especially when I barbell squat uh, and it's on one side that screams QL to me. And it, like 99% of the workouts that are out there lack any lateral stability, anything. Yeah. Like there's almost none in there. They both, they both, by the way, too, are going to feed into each other, right? Like, so right. if you have poor ankle mobility, what will happen is as you go down, you'll like one side, like rarely ever is our left to right exactly the same. So you have like a little bit better on the left side there's, than the right. So it causes that bar, that barbell to slightly shift to the right or the left Happens. a little bit. And then it flares yeah. up that QL like Sal saying. So they're, it's not, they're not exclusively mutual. It's yeah, like, of course. it's like yeah. you were doing the stuff they're saying QL wise while also continuing to work on 99. 90, I mean, excuse me, on combat stretch is going to be massive for you, yeah, but yeah. it's, uh, they, they, they both are probably, but you're not probably exactly like me. Cause like I said, I could fit my arm under there. That's what yeah, I was yeah. looking for was you to say it was that bad. So yeah. it is most likely the QL you're feeling, but it doesn't mean it's not also being exacerbated by the right. lack of ankle mobility. It's they're, it, they're If you can progressively load a windmill and really like get strong in that, it like, it's just naturally going to take care of itself. Your body's going to support itself like you've never had it support your back uh to the point where too you can even work on doing a bent press we should have them on old time strength. i think i think honestly that's what i'm getting at perfect yeah, yeah. old time strength i think if you run that you'll go back to gonna, squatting. your mind is gonna be blown yeah like how like supported and stabilized uh your body's gonna be going back into those conventional you know no an easy way to test this okay literally yeah. is you could like right now if your back is kind of tight right now you it could is. do it is. You could do an old school dumbbell side bend. This is an exercise people made. Plus, fun you of already for. almost have the mustache for it. I yeah, <laughs> for the old <laughs> made for it, dude. Hey. Yeah. yeah, but you know, like you could test this right now. Like if your back is feeling kind of like, oh, I feel it's kind of tight. You literally right. could stand up, hold a dumbbell in one hand, and do put your feet together and do an old school side bend. Do ten reps on one side, and you'll know right away. Be like, oh yeah, there it is. I feel it. Okay. I could feel what's happening. And that's that'll be your answer if if that happens to you, but. I, if you follow, so old time strength is the best program we have, period, end of story, for that kind of stability, for the kind of stability where you could lift heavy things 
and be offset, or you could suspend or hold heavy things overhead mm -hmm. and have that type of stability. It, it, it really creates a strong, stiff body. And so, I don't mean in a negative way. I mean, like, you're able to have that stability. So what I want you to do, Noah, is I want you to follow old-time strength. I want you to uh, be obsessed with the ankle mobility and and mm -hmm. then report back to us. I mm -hmm. have a feeling... I bet if, you'll hit a PR on your if you're If you're more obsessed about your ankle mobility than you ever have before and you follow old-time strength to a T... I can't wait to hear what you feel and notice when you get back. I think you'll hit. I think you'll hit a PR in your yeah, squat. Yeah. I would. I would love to, and I'm embarrassed to say I've never even tried the windmills. Right. I really thought it was like really like the hip mobility. I got obsessed with that. Um, so I definitely need to focus on like the QL stability. Yeah. So definitely should have been focusing on that. I just was blinded. Right. I know everything is connected. Right. The ankle, the hips, the core, everything. Um, and I was driving myself insane because I'm like, I've been doing this for years and it's really gotten worse the past couple of years. Yep. But um, no, I, thank you for those tips. I'm actually doing legs today in about two hours. So oh. I'm going to implement this. Oh, we're going we're, we're to send the program over to you. So you got it. You got it. Oh, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Be thank huge, you, folks. I appreciate that. Um, do, do I have time just for one quick yep. question Let's hear that kind of correlates? So another thing, whenever I'm doing like my static stretching um, at night or I always get like cramps in my hip flexors and like on the bottom of my feet, like the soft spot, you know? And, and like yesterday I was benching and I was going kind of heavy, had like two, like 265 on the bar and I was putting it up and I just got a cramp in my right hip flexor, yeah. just super tight. And like when I'm doing these stretches at night, like I'm doing like the 90 90s, like the child pose. And like, I just keep getting these cramps. It's been happening pretty much my whole life. I drink LMNT every single day. I get the potassium, the magnesium. I try to get like, I, I feel like, again, I'm doing everything right, but I don't know why like I continue to cramp up. It's not really like if I'm walking my dog, I get a cramp, but it's really like when I'm stretching and trying to calm down, Adam, I actually followed along with you with the uh, Prime Pro webinar like a year ago. And you even said in the video, like if you feel a cramp fight through it, it'll, it'll go away. But damn, they hurt, and like I struggle <laughs> to fight through it. Um, well, I can't, I can't help so you with the pain part. But you know, the the seminar that you went through with Adam is not static stretching. So, are you doing static stretching, or are you like doing mobility where you're activating the muscles? Because yeah. those are very different. Yeah. So prior to working out, I do mobility. Before bed, I try to do static stretching to kind of calm down, unwind okay. a little bit. Okay. So I do the mobility priming before resistance training. Got it. The static stretching before I lay down. And go to when bed. you're doing the static stretching, when does the hip flexor cramp up? Is it when you're stretching your hamstrings? Yeah. Okay. It's because the when you're in that long stretch, the hamstrings are lengthened, the hip flexor shortened, mm. and the hip flexor is trying to stabilize the joint. So it's good. So it'd be like um, you'll notice a hip flexor uh, do that when you're doing a hamstring stretch. You'll notice it on the bottom of your foot when you're pointing your toes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what can you do about it? If your electrolytes are balanced, not much other than trying to calm the CNS. So sometimes when people do static stretching, they, uh, they hold their breath and they, without realizing it. Yeah. So, so static stretching, the idea is to relax and calm the CNS. That means you also have to relax your mind and breathe like you're someone who's relaxed. And that might actually help. Try doing it after a hot bath and tell me if you feel better. Okay. Have take a hot yeah. bath and then do your static stretching candles and, tell me and bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Candles and bubbles. I, he's yeah. a guy though. I don't think yeah. he takes baths. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm so sorry to train. Bath, I'm gonna make baths uh, popular again, bro. Yeah, no. yeah. Sit down while you pee no. and take a yeah. bath like that. Right. <laughs> bath boys. <laughs> no, no, that, that all that all sounds good. Thank you, fellas. And I know I know you all are busy, but just want to give you all just a quick thanks individually, just kind of alphabetically. Um, Adam, thanks for the strawberry walnut cream, creatures of habit. I'm not just saying it because I'm on the show. Dude, it's the best flavor. Uh, me and you. my wife stocked up on all their flavors. Yeah. It's our favorite one. Also, no shame to admit it. I've been peeing sitting down at night for years now, <laughs> getting up in the middle <laughs> of the what night. On, Dude, there are guys out there, man. It's yeah. a win. Sal and Justin, I feel like if you start doing it, you're going to know we're right. Yeah. And that's why you don't yeah. want to do it. No. So, Adam, I want to thank you for you know, hooking up the guys out there. I that got you, that. No brother. Shame. I got you. I'm so oh. embarrassed. <laughs> 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 Doug, thanks for all the work you do behind the scenes. Um, being like the dad of the group, I really enjoy listening when you chime in on any topics that are discussed, whether it's fitness or non-fitness related. So really enjoy that. Uh, Justin, again, your conspiracy theories, just all the fun facts you bring to the podcast about random animals or history. Love that. Um, also love your take on like the functional side of training. 
with current and former athletes, just given my background, whenever you talk about that kind of stuff, it's just really entertaining to me. Cool. Uh, Sal, I need to thank you for being partially responsible for now my supplement addiction that I've had for like the past <laughs> two years. Um, with all with all, all your partners. Um, oh, with our partners, it's all good. Then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, you, that you talk about. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Yeah, no, we appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. But thank, we'll, thank we'll send you all time strength. It's. It, I think I. I feel very very confident. Bro, please what email. I, I please email us after you've gone through at least sixty to ninety days of it, so we can hear. Because okay. I have. I have a yes. feeling that you're going to. You're going to blow your mind. Anybody yeah. that's done it, man. It's yeah. been game changer. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you, fellas. And, and um, you know, happy holidays to you all and your families, especially your kids. So thank you uh, again. Keep keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. And I'll keep you guys updated. Appreciate thanks, it, brother. Thanks, bro. Thank you, man. All right. Thanks, fellas. You got it. I don't care good, good what anybody yeah. says. Does if you're a man FBI? and you pee just... sitting down. <laughs> don't start this, bro. <laughs> Unless you have to. You're losing this argument. Just you're losing this one. You lost the you lost the freaking space race. You're losing all kinds of stuff lately, oh bro. God. Just stay in your lane. And then what he said, Justin, stay the conspiracy theorist. I don't think Justin's a conspiracy theorist anymore because they all come true. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, he's yeah. like a, he's like prophet. Just talk, he's I, a prophet. We're gonna start calling Justin the bro, prophet. I'm just it, just pay attention. What the hell? It's so like, weird. People don't want to talk about it. No, it's listen. Fine. I I'm more I. I more and more convinced, uh, and it's so that's why I love this. Like as I continue to do this, you, you never know everything, and you just I just learn more and more. Advanced lifters, people who've been working out for a while, I think this is a very common issue. People who've been lifting for years and years and years, good form, good technique, trying to do everything right. They have nagging low back issues, especially with barbell squats. I have yet to see programs that really address that lateral stability. Uh -huh. Nobody does. It's all bilateral or it's all balanced. It's all balanced in the way it's loaded. And the QL is just stabilizing with every exercise. And what happens is everything gets so strong yeah. and the QL gets strong in this isometric contraction, but any movement outside of it, ugh, yeah. it's, it gets overpowered. And so then you get sore. It's like, you're, he, it's literally like his body is too strong for what is strong and stabilizing, but it's not like a strong muscle, like yeah. a contraction. -wise. Like we're not focused on actually building that strength. And that's really where old time it like, unlike Dude. any other program is really addressing that. Listen, head on. I had to avoid barbell. You guys know this for a little while for the same issue. And I literally, okay. Two workouts with dumbbell side bends, not even the best QL exercise you could do. It's just a yeah. basic, like, okay, let's try gone i was like oh crap that that's what it was <laughs> yeah. and i love it when i find stuff like that but i think this is a I much know. more common it's, issue than, than great when we people have realize like that totally look uh if you're a trainer or coach do this mindpumptrainer.com sign up three-day course we're going to teach you how to be a more successful trainer with your business and with your clients it's mindpumptrainer.com you can also find all of us on instagram justin is at mindpumpjustin i'm at mindpumpdestefano and adam is at mindpumpadam 